G'day, I'm Grant McLaughlin, the author of Sparrow. Between 2002 and 2008, I travelled throughout the world interviewing as many members of Sparrow Force as I could find, obviously starting with my grandfather, who was a gunner in the 79th light, light anti-aircraft battery of the Royal Artillery, whose battery reinforced Sparrow Force in Dutch Timor days before the Japanese invaded. Now, since I'd finished Sparrow, I now realise that most of the uh, veterans have now passed on. Secondly, that uh, the interviews that I have are the only ones... Uh, uh, with these veterans and thirdly the family members of those I interviewed didn't realize that I've interviewed them now I've been contacted by the uh, the Price family uh, who's uh, Bert Price's uh, family now uh, they have asked me to share uh, my interviews with Bert on my YouTube channel now Bert has an interesting story to tell a very unique one because he was the Brigadier Veal's uh, driver and he was with him when the Japanese uh, paratroopers uh, landed in Dutch Timor. And he also escaped through to the East Timor uh, to join the 2nd 2nd Independent Company and fought as part of Platoon D. He was then evacuated out of Timor back to Australia and then joined the 2nd 12th Infantry Battalion and fought in places like New Guinea and Morotai. Now he's got a fascinating story. I've interviewed him at length on several occasions and I also uh, followed up these interviews by ringing him up to clarify a few things from my book. So here is the uncut interviews with Bert Price. Enjoy. Bye. Speaking of Bert Price and his and his pet in um, Dover in southern Tasmania, which is as far as you can be from Timor in Australia, isn't it? <laughs> How far to the, to the very southern point of the no, you town? Down another, another kilometers. Yeah, yeah. So I was wondering, um, how old were you when you joined the Australian Army? Just turned 20. Just turned 20. Okay, and when did you join up? 1940. Yeah. And why did you join up? Why did you join? Well, at that time, uh, I was working the back of being over, and the uh, white girl turned 20 a bit, and the you know, of the war yeah. wasn't going our way, and they was calling for recruits, so I, I just went along. Yeah. Do you remember any, uh, any people you joined up with? Oh, yes, yes. Can you, name, can you remember their names? Oh, Colin Price, Don Woolley, Max Bat, yeah. uh, Rocky Kennedy. You weren't in any relation to Colin Price? No. No. You just remember that name? Yeah, well, we became mates. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, did, did, oh, Jim Yates. Uh, oh, gosh. Did any of them uh, become part of the second 40th? Yes. Yeah. All, all became part of the second 40th. You all became part of the second 40th. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what sort of training did you receive? Oh, we, we seen, we received our initial training at Brighton. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we had the route marches, we had exercises, uh, rifles on the range, and, mm -hmm. and uh, our general training all round. Okay. So, uh, did you, you then went to Victoria? Got on the SS Landy in Hobart, yeah. shipped to, to Melbourne, then by train to uh, Boney Gilla, uh, just about on the border of New South Wales and Victoria. So you're on the Zealandia twice? Yep. So you basically went from Hobart, uh, went from Tasmania to the mainland, mm -hmm. and then you went from on the same boat to Timor? Yeah, from Darwin to Timor. Yeah. What was your reaction when you saw that ship again? Oh, it was great because it, 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 well, we th always uh, thought it was a Tasmanian ship. Oh, okay. Which, of course, she uh, was a passenger ship between Sydney and Hobart for many years. Oh, okay. So, what was your trip like across the uh, across the continent? Oh, it's going well. Oh, from Bungilla to Adelaide, it was all right. Yeah. Uh, Adelaide to uh, Tarawi, all right. But then, when we went from Tarawi to Alice Springs. It wasn't a bad trip, slow trip. Now it springs to uh, Burdum. Yep. Uh, at different places we had to fill sandbags and yeah. uh, place them in the river, the, across the river beds and to make a, 
they could pack through. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a bad trip. Yeah. Uh, what platoon were you originally put into the second for you? Yeah, 11 platoon. 11 platoon? Six section. Six section. And, and six section, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I apologise for my accent. <laughs> um, and who was your squad leader? Uh, Max Elliston. Elliston. From La Trobe. La Trobe. Mm -hmm. um, approximately, how, mo were most of, most of your battalion were from Tasmania, weren't they? Oh yes, just on 100 percent. Yeah, and uh, all the officers, a lot of the officers were also from Tasmania. Yeah, quite a few. T we had odd ones from mainland. Yeah. But 11 platoon was B Company. Yep. Yeah. B. And Roth was in charge. Yeah, Captain Roth. So do you remember when you first saw Roth? Yeah, I did. I remember when I first looked at him, he's a man, and you think, well, he, he's, a, he's a good bloke to have as a leader. Yeah. He always looked a man, he always proved to be a man. Was he um, different from uh, the other people by any distinguishable features or accent or anything like that? No, he's a big man, spoke well because he's a, uh, the head of the uh, Launceston Church, Church Grammar School. He was English. Was he? I didn't realise that. I mean, was he born in England? Did he? Uh... No, no, I don't know where he was born. No. No, but he, did he have an, a, a, a Tasmanian accent or an Australian accent? More so an Australian accent, yeah. To me, that was it. He was a big chap. Yep, big man. Well spoken, intelligent. Yes. And he had the respect of everyone. He certainly had the respect of our company. Mm. Uh, did, was he a, a leader from the front? Definitely a leader, yes. Yeah. What, what, he, what he, he said went. You did what he you asked you to do, you did. Yeah. And you also had people like Gatenby and, and that in your company as well. No, I don't remember much about Gatenby at all. No. But uh, Alliston was in charge, was your sergeant. No, uh, Alliston, Max Alliston was our corporal. Your corporal? Yeah. Cor sorry, corporal, yeah. yeah and, uh, oh, you know, Jimmy Robertson was our. Uh, Two okay, and so number 11, uh, who was in charge of your platoon? At uh, that time, Lieutenant McIntyre. McIntyre. Mm -hmm. And on Timor, who, did, it, did that change? No, it changed. Uh, it, when we were in camp in uh, Noonamar, yeah. they took 10% of our battalion to send south and brought in reinforcements. Yeah. At that time, I transferred over to uh, Headquarter Company uh, in Jack Frost platoon, the uh, transport platoon. Okay. So did you become a driver or...? Yes. Okay. So uh, did, you have to did, you, did you require any special training to become a driver? No, not a lot. Yeah. Uh, Jack Frost took us out and yeah. uh, Jack Rice was about the same time, yeah. took us out and yeah. he was satisfied he was okay. There's always one question I, I, I've forgotten one question already I should have asked you originally. What did you do before you joined the Army? Uh, mainly forestry. I went into a forestry training camp at Moore Banner. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when, while I was there, the war broke out and I came south to join up. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't old enough, so I went to a fruit preserving factory until I turned 20. Okay. Did you know how to drive a truck at that stage? Yes, I've driven trucks at those times. So did that, is that one of the reasons why they put you in the transport platoon? No, I don't think so. I just wanted someone to, you know, to fill his platoon up and uh -huh. we were willing and he was willing. So, so you're in the same platoon as uh, Neil Dawson? Yep. Yeah. So I was wondering, uh, you also had people like uh, Ron Cassidy? Yeah, no, Ron, yes. And... Uh, I just think there's another person. Who else was in your platoon? Oh, Vic Lockley. Yeah. Uh, I think we've got some. <laughs> uh, we had old Sergeant Otto, Sergeant. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got a blank. But, uh, oh, Corporal Caro. Yeah. Uh, some of the. Uh, uh, some of the brothers from uh, Tri Bun, but I can't think of the name. Yeah. O'Neill brothers from okay. Tri Bun. So uh, what was it like, um, where were you when Pearl Harbor was attacked? We were at Noonamar, 18, about 18 miles south of Darwin. 
around the bay? No, no, it's, it's more south. Okay. South towards Casserine. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And um, what were your order, what, what was your reaction when you heard that um, Singapore had also been attacked and you're now at war against the Japanese? Well, we just packed up and got ready. Yeah? So, on the train then to Darwin. Mm -hmm. And where were you sent from there? The Darwin onto the Zealandia yeah. to Copang and Timor. What was what was your what was your reaction when you first saw Timor? Or what was your first impressions of Timor? Oh, it's, it's, uh, you know, uh, it, it seemed yeah, you seen a quiet place. You wouldn't think you'd go on there for war. Yeah. But then the Timorese, they they prowl around us and pretty good with us. Yeah. And uh, no, I don't think I really can remember my first impression. Oh, okay. You also thought, was it a backward place or was it... Oh, yes, yes, you can see it's, you know, it's you know, good to compare to our own country town. Well, how did you unload the ship? you remember that? How did you get off the ship? Oh, well, we come down so onto some barges and uh, yeah. took us took us some of the way in and the Timorese often uh, offered to carry some off the shore. Oh, okay. But uh, it was a bit heavy for them, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what was your first impression of the Timorese? Yeah, we always found the Timorese friendly and, yeah. and helpful. Do they look different? Oh, definitely different to you know, what we were used to. Yeah, the, the, most, most people said they were small people. Oh, yes, they were, they were not a very big race, no. No. And um, what was, do you remember your first night on land in Timor? Where, where did you sleep? Good one, that one. Uh, I'd be at uh, Penfui in the uh, temporary barracks there, I think. Oh, okay. So uh, it was on Timor that you were assigned to the, the transport platoon? No, we just signed the transport platoon in Nunamar. Nunamar, that's yeah, right, yeah. sorry, I'm just, just thinking. Yeah. So that, that was uh, at Penfui, there was a place called Force Hill. Are you aware of the, 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 the uh, Sparrow Force headquarters there at on the hill just south of Penfui? No, no, no. But just north of Penfui, sorry? No. No. So what, all the trucks, how were they unloaded from the Zealand here? Well, well a, lot, a lot of those uh, vehicles were there before us. I don't know how it came about. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah so uh, when, when we went ashore, we had to go and claim our vehicles and uh, yeah? report to the you know, uh, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Frost. Well, and, um, you had your own truck, and what type of truck was it? A Chev Utility. Chev Utility. Yeah, covered back. What colour was it? Oh, green. Green? Green. As in uh, uh, army green rather than yeah, desert green? green. Yeah. Okay. And uh, do, you, do you remember any details about the uh, the Chevrolet truck? No. No, not a lot, no. But, but all the trucks were all the same? Well, probably all of a sudden there's, there's heavier ones, but I had nothing to do with them. Yeah. So, uh, what was your duties on, on Timor when you arrived? Well, I was uh, attached to A Company with a machine gun post. Uh, uh, Don Woolley had the machine gun and uh, set up at the Safa Bazaar, and I just went there and done whatever duties he wanted me to do. Okay. So, who, who were you and who was, who was your uh, senior officer telling you what to do every day? Oh, that would be Sergeant Woolley. Pardon? Sergeant Woolley. Oh, Woolley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, you remember the first time that you saw a Japanese plane? Oh, yeah, I remember that all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see this, see this plane, you see, see the Jap grinning. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do, so I stole the ute, jumped out and got in the cockpit. Where was that? At Penfui. Penfui. Do you remember which end of the runway you were or where you oh, were on that field? I was just, just thinking with the west end. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, this plane just, just happened to do a, a low buzz of the airfield? Yeah, no, yeah, just did a low buzz, that was all. Were there any other aircraft at that airfield at the time? I mean, no. was, did, did anyone decide to get on a plane and chase it? No, no, nothing there, no. No? No. Yeah. I think some of them tried a few shots, but... Uh, 
that I was in that area. Do you think it was a scout plane, or do you think or did it did it follow a, a raid or a bombing raid on Copan no, or anything like that? No, I just know what it was. It just looked to me to be a fighter plane. Yeah. It, so that was the very first Japanese plane you saw, and you saw yeah. the big red dot yeah, on the no, side. Yeah, the posting. Yeah. What did you think when you saw it? <laughs> Get out of his road as fast as I could. <laughs> did he uh, do a strafing run? No, he didn't straf at all. He just flew over. Ah, scouting. Scout plane, maybe. Yeah. Do you remember when you first heard of Darwin being attacked? No, I don't. Because uh, we, we, we got attacked about the same time and no, nothing coming back. From, you know, we, we never got no news back from Darwin at all. Okay. So, uh, do you remember when the first bombers bombed Timor, including Kopang and yeah, that must have been on the, on the 19th or 20th. Yeah? yeah Apparently in January 1942, there was uh, uh, some plots and bombers came over and bombed Copang. It wasn't in that. Okay. No, it wasn't in that. Okay. So, uh, do you remember anything about Leggett? Him coming on to the, and taking over? Remember? No, I can't, can't remember a lot about him. You know, everyone was disappointed that uh, Colonel Jeff Yule had left us and that yeah. was taking over. Yeah. But, uh, in a lowly rank, I never had nothing to do with him much. So, uh, it was Leggett kind of. People don't, didn't really know anything about him. He, uh, and people. Pe Yule obviously was quite popular. Was Yule quite popular amongst the second 40th men? Well, that I don't know because, uh, you know, he. Yeah. Uh, to me, he is, he is our command, and we just we just looked up to him. Yeah, and then suddenly this this Melbourne lawyer came onto the scene. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't know anything about him? No, nothing at all about him. No. Yeah. Um, and you would have had Major Campbell under him. Yes. Do you know anything about Major Campbell? No, not a lot. Yeah. Which officers did you see the most of during your time on Timor? Well, you know, it's only the one to come in contact with was Captain Johnson mm -hmm. and uh, Captain Roth. Okay. What was John? What was Johnston like? Never had a lot to do with him, but he uh, he's, he seemed to know his job. And was he a quiet yeah. chap, or was he a big build, small build, slight? Uh, he's an average build, oh, a little bit more than average, I suppose. And, uh, yeah. He's, he's, he's a chap. He you know, looked to him as a leader. Yeah. You heard about how he died. Yes, yeah, so I heard of how he died, but... Uh, yeah, but you heard that after the war? Yep, after yeah, after we never knew on it. Yeah, he went into um, one of the Bothers, and, a, and, a, and a, it was on a motorcycle, the sidecar, and he yeah. went into the, into the barrel of the Bothers. Yeah, no, I never knew for sure. Yeah. Um, Neil Dawson saw it. <laughs> oh, well, he did. Yeah. yeah. My granddad looked around and thought, what's that noise? <laughs> yeah, it's... um. So, Brigadier Veal and Major Chisholm. I knew of Major Chisholm and uh, had every respect for him. Yeah. But, uh, Brigadier Veal, I didn't know much about him at all. When did you first hear that you were part of Sparrow Force? When did you ever first hear that term, Sparrow Force? Oh, I, I suppose we'd be landing team. Or... Yeah. And you, you, you also knew that there was a uh, the coastal battery. Oh yes, the Lima. Yeah. What was yeah. it like at the coastal battery? What did you? How did you? I didn't have much to do. Well, the chap on you really well there, Taz Knight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was there and seen him occasionally, but never took much notice of it. <laughs> and did you? You knew about the independent company down the eastern end. Yes, yes. I'd, uh, I'd met uh, Lieutenant Doyle in in Copang on one occasion. Oh, okay. So, uh, Lieutenant Doyle. No, no, Doyle. Doig. No, Doig, sorry. Doig, okay. Yeah, Colin Doyle. So they used to come down every no, now and then? No, he was there for a special reason. And, uh, okay. So, uh, you also had quite a few other units. You had uh, the medical, which had Dr. Brown and and all those lot. Did you get to know any of them? Oh, Dr. Max Brown, he was our battalion MO, but then there's others there that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. The medical, mm -hmm. no reason to know. I was fascinated that he had all these little units like the 18 anti tank. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you know what they did? No, I never had a clue. You never saw them or anything? No. I don't know where they were because uh, it's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, did you ever go up to Fort Cape Lima? No. Did, uh, 
used to just basically based around the Sarva Star and A yeah. Company and B Company, but mostly B Company. Uh, no, I, I was attached to A Company, so mm -hmm. mostly ran A Company at Sarva Bazaar. Yeah. So you just happened to be in Champalong at one stage uh, when the paratroopers came out of the sky. No, the, the night before I was ordered to go to A Company yes. and collect all the personal gear I could and take it back to Pajab along. Uh -huh. And then uh, the next day that's when the paratroopers come down. Okay, so you out. were transporting personal items. Yep. Do you know, do you, uh, were you told the reasons why you were taking personal items at the Champlain? Oh, just for safe storage at that time. And oh, just safe storage. Yeah, it, it was, it was it because they thought that invasion was imminent? Oh, or? yes, yes, that was it. Yeah. So you just happened to drive up there that night. Did you have any passengers with you? No, no one. Just you? Mm -hmm. Who else was up at Champalong? Oh, there's odd ones I knew. The you know, Swamit Marsh was there and uh, Jimmy Kane. Uh, oh, Jim Kane. Yeah. Yeah. Neil Drummond. Uh, different ones. Uh -huh. Didn't know a lot there. Yeah. So, uh, the next day, uh, you had Veal up there as well, Brigadier Veal. Yeah, can't remember anything about him though. Yeah, and you had Major Spence and uh, was uh, Poitavin, was one of the doctors up there too? No, I don't recall Poitavin, no. I got, I got, actually got video footage, I'll show you, <laughs> of the hospital. Oh, I was yeah, up there yeah. a oh, week ago, sure. I, we got our champ along. Yeah. Uh, so, when did you first hear that the Japanese had landed? Oh, we, we knew that the next morning, mm -hmm. uh, after I'd gone back to my dad, when they landed, and we were supposed to go back, but that's the, the day they dropped the parachute between us and the main force. Did you see the, did you see the paratroopers landing? Yeah, we see odd ones, yes. Where were you when you saw the paratroopers falling out of the sky? Oh, there, there's a, a ridge away from where, for example, along where the hospital was. And yeah. That's that, where we seen. In fact, I think we were sent out there as OPIP to see what was going on. Did you, uh, we, we, did you cross the Mena River Bridge by that stage? Have you already crossed that bridge? You know how you go down that, that windy road and you follow the river for a short time and you cross the bridge? Oh, yeah. Have yeah, you paid you crossed that bridge when you saw the paratroopers? No, I can't, I can't recall, no. Mm. Because you can see all the way to Copang from Champalong oh, yeah. on a clear day. Yeah, you can see you had a good view. So you actually saw quite a few paratroopers fall out of the sky. Who, was there, who else was with you, do you remember? I uh, no, there's a couple of others there. You know, people looking out to see what was going on. Did you ever try to uh, break through to... Uh... We had one go on foot, but uh, you know, there's, you know, just on our own. No guidance, that was, we just couldn't get through. Did any of, uh, you realise that Clack Lingle was bombed that morning and a lot of the injured people were, were, were trying to get, uh, were put on trucks and sent to Champlain. Yeah. Did any of them make it? Did you I, I don't them? know, I don't know. Yeah. Fascinates me that. Um, so what did you do after you saw the paratroopers? Well, I suppose we went back and reported back to the gap along. Mm -hmm. And then we, we stayed there for, it's hard to recall how long we stopped there. Mm -hmm. The next order we got was to uh, uh, take people through to, to Atambala. Okay. Did you, you would have seen Clyde Mackay come up the road on that patrol. Yeah. Did the 15th platoon come up the road to, to, uh, to yeah. scout the road up to Champlain? Yeah, two of us, yes, two of us on the platoon came up. We, we some, see some of them. And a Bofors batter, and a Bofors detachment? No. You didn't see them? No. Okay. They must have just stuck by the road, uh, by the bridge there. Okay. So, um, when did you, when did you, when and how did you find out that the, uh, the main force had surrendered? Well, we found out at a bar when, uh, Major Chisholm came through and told us. Major Chisholm. Oh, he was the second in command of Vale, wasn't he? Chisholm. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get him mixed up with uh, that. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, no, 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 it wasn't his second command. He, he's a second party officer, and uh, just, I mean, he wanted to lay out with uh, Brigadier Bar. Okay. So, you jumped 
Were you driving near the trucks that went up to Adam Bar? Yes, I drove them. Uh, do you remember who was with you on the back? Was it mostly injured people? No, or? I don't even remember the paymaster. Yeah, Captain Atkins. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, the paymaster. Okay. And uh, how long did you have been driving through the night to yeah. get to Adam Bar? Yeah. No, he wasn't supposed to use lights, but occasionally he did. Did you see any Japanese before that stage? Did you ever have any contact with them? Did you see no. any scouts and all that? No. So you, you were blindly retreating into yeah, yeah. Annabar and you really, really didn't know what was going to happen? No, we had never clue. God, so you, you sat at Annabar. I mean, when you arrived at Annabar, what happened then? Oh, after we got word that the uh, battalion had, uh, had to surrender, mm -hmm. uh, they took some of us uh, head us for the uh, north coast of Timor. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think we sent to a place called Bataputi. Oh, OK. Yeah, and then Brig Brigadier, uh, then... Uh, Word came through that Bigger Veal said uh, every man for himself, and that's when we all split up. And um, you, were you originally with Shaman's Lot? No, no. Who was in your group? In my group, there's, uh, there's Jack Rice, uh, Peter Cannon, Hurdle mm -hmm. O'Keefe, myself, mm -hmm. a chap named from the West Coast, Bill Boyd, mm -hmm. and uh, we had these few transport drivers there, we all stuck together. Okay. And until they're trying to come and split up. Yeah. And uh, do you know what happened? Uh, you, you're given the option, you said, that you could have joined Charm's lot. Yep, it is. Uh, Including well, Clyde Mackay and all that. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I went to say, say cheerio to Mick Belkin from Dover. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, he said, well, he come with us. He said, Jerry Sharma said, would you? He could loot <laughs> and he'll look after us. And I said, no, we've decided it's t too many, you know, just the four shall go together. So you thought that you would out more if you're in a large group? Yep. Did you know how to survive in the bush? Oh, we had a pretty good idea. And, uh, yeah? And we proved that we did, so... Okay, so you went up to the north coast, and you tried to find a boat? No, we went down, we thought it was a chance for a boat. We went to this place, Matter Pooty, mm -hmm. but... Uh, there's nothing there, we decided to make back to Adam Bower. Oh. Are you aware that other people got on boats and just tried uh, to go out to Yeah, we just, uh, we just heard different things. Yeah. If, you, if you're going to find a boat, where were you going to go? Well, that's, that's uh, we never thought much about, although we, one time we did think there's an island off there for the island. We thought if we got there, they might be in each other. Oh. If we got on a boat, that's where they would Apparently some people thought that there was a radio on a, one of the islands offshore, a law, an island called a law. No. no. So you arrived at the coast to find the boat, so you decided to go to the Adam Bar. Yeah. What did you find there? So we, we found a lot of confusion. Yeah. All, all our vehicles, we had to take uh, out the sump and run out the vehicles so they seized up. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, some of them had got going on it again. And then we, uh, we decided we'd... Uh, Headed to the Portuguese Timor, mm -hmm. because you know, we put a neutral country, might be yeah. okay there. But, and then we, heard, you know, we knew about the independent company, that yeah. uh, we're having a bit of something to eat and talking, and the Japs come in out of bar, so we, we just left to East Timor then. Did you actually see the Japanese coming? No, we, we, we could. Uh, yeah, you could hear the bullets coming, eh? You could hear the bullets? Yeah, well, we... Oh, that's right, they I thought it was the bridge. Yeah, yeah just, just out of uh, Adam Boa. Yeah, that's right. Um, and was any, was it just you, you four again? Just us four again. And you just decided to head east along the road? Yeah. the Portuguese team. Who was, did you, who did you meet up with? I mean, how did you meet up with these people on these Seymour? Uh, we, we made our way through there to the Tillamar and then we got uh, you know, the Timor saying, you know, Aussie, Aussie, and uh, that point. And uh, yeah. then we made our way through yeah. and eventually caught up with some of the, some of the things in the independent company. Yeah. And they guided us to Marty. Who was the first person you met, do you remember? I think it was Cole Doy. Yeah? And he would have been uh, patrolling the border. Yeah, I don't know what his job was then. Yeah? 
But you just, I mean, what was your first impression when you saw this? Uh, he's, he's older. I mean, but I just felt relieved that you oh, finally yes, met yes, up with the independent yeah, company. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we got somewhere to be okay. What do you think his impression was when he saw you lot? You four? I've got no idea. <laughs> did he, uh, what did the, uh, was he surprised to see you? Yeah, I think he was surprised to see you. Yeah. And, and what did he, t well, and, and uh, what, can you make, can you make Remember what the conversation was about when you saw him, when you met him? No, definitely said, well, you know, the best thing we can do here is get you into Marfie mm -hmm. and uh, see what we can do from there. Mm -hmm. And did you just find your own way to Marfie? Yeah, yes, we, we had a, you know, a, a good guide, so we, we got there. Uh, one of the native guides? Yeah. So, so Doy basically said, here's a guide, he'll yeah. take you to Marfie. Yeah. He'll continue on his way.
were you ever approached by anyone uh, to order you to surrender? Were you ever present when someone maybe... You remember how you said someone was sent from the drivers at Atambawa to order you guys to surrender yeah, and yeah, get yeah, in sure. return? We, we were told that Corporal K came out. Yep. Uh, the mission for the to surrender, go and there, you know, enjoy the good food and be with your mates. Yep. But uh, we never ever seen him, just the word came through and... Uh, he went back and just took the message back that uh, we weren't going to surrender. Yeah. And what was the, do you know of his reaction when he, when he told him that, he, that they weren't going to surrender? That you, guys, that you weren't going to surrender? Yeah, so the only thing, you know, I've been told that when he had, we had a kid because then uh, it was sort of a, a martyr if he didn't go back. And uh, some sort of a that when he had to go back into yeah, he probably wanted to join you guys, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, so, um, action, Turton. Yeah. What was Turton like? He's a, he's a man. Uh, was he? Yeah, well, I suppose a little bit too uh, anxious to, uh, you know, get into action and, uh, uh, you know, set up ambushes and he, he kept looking for things. Did you ever follow them around on on ambushes? Oh yes, well, always with him. Yes, yeah. always with him. And uh, did he ever? He taught you how to do ambushes and so forth. Oh, well, that sort of comes second nature to us, I think. Was it? Okay. <laughs> so, um, did you do any ambushes before you uh, made contact with the mainland? You know, when Winnie the War winner. Did you have any ambushes before Winnie the War winner? No, I don't think I did an ambush before that, no. Yeah. We did patrols, but no ambushes. So, pretty much you were just doing patrolling up until when the war winner was made? Yeah. Do you remember anything about... Did you ever see Winnie the war winner at, uh, in East Timor? No, never, never seen it. Okay. Um, when did you first hear about Winnie the war winner? Yeah, oh, Major Chisholm, he, he, I think it was... Colonel Spencer, I think they they have making a, a tour of the, uh, the, the of the defences or, the, or of the you know, different posts that we had set up. Mm -hmm. Major Chisholm told us. Yeah. That was a big relief. I knew about that. But up to that, we didn't seem to worry. I don't yeah. know why. What sort of weapons did you have at that before winning the war winner? Oh, we had a, a, when we came through from. Uh, West Timor, we had our 303 rifles, we had grenades, yeah. we had ammunition, that, that was only some of us. Some yeah. didn't carry the weapons at all. So, uh, what use did they have for the people who didn't have their own rifles? <laughs> they had to wait until it was dropped, <laughs> to set them up. So, uh, after contact was made with the mainland, did you ever use any other uh, type of weapon? Yep. Yes, yeah, then after they got the red, red guns and uh, other different, you know, uh, 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 bullets and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I got onto a red gun and carried it for the next four or five months. Mm -hmm. Never left me. Red gun. A red gun is something that is actually quite a heavy machine gun. Yeah, it weighs about 29 pounds. And how did, no, you, 26 pounds, sorry. How did you transport it? On the shoulder. On the shoulder. Yeah, but it that also requires a rather big magazine, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's a, a canister. Yeah. yeah. That uh, cha uh, chain. Yes, yeah, so it's a sort of half ring. And uh, we carried, I think, out of the 25 bullets. So, what, in the ambushes and so forth, what was your role with the spring gun? Just, just to get in and uh, get it onto as many as I could. Okay, Get as many gaps as I could. Was that was it an easy weapon to run up a mountain on your back? <laughs> with, with one of them on your back? No, no it wasn't good, especially if your barrel was hot. But yeah. You pick it up by the barrel and put it on the back to the rear and the, away you go. What sort of clothing did you have, did you wear at that stage? No, we just had the shirts and shorts. Yeah? And your Tommy hat? No, well, we always stuck through with our steel helmet. Yeah? I did anyway. You did? What about the other guys? Oh, most of them had steel helmets. Yeah. Did you ever grow a beard? 
Oh, and uh, half a beer, only. What, what half? <laughs> no. That way? Or <laughs> that way? Or <laughs> down ways, yeah. Down ways. Um, but it wasn't success, so. How soon after, you know, the. Uh, did, how long did, did people just decide to just grow beards straight away after? They retreated into the bush, or yeah, I think they did. Or was because because the the razor blades ran out. Yeah, I think the razor blades were a problem. Yeah. Yes, it, yeah, you, the only way you could get it sharpened if you if you had a glass, uh, you know, just a piece of glass, and get your blade and whirl, whirl it around in that and put an edge on your blade, and enough to shave with. So, did you have a a, a, a moustache as well as a beard? Yeah, that's dark, but. Uh, and you're you're naturally dark haired, uh, black or brown, at that age. I mean, hair. Yeah, you're hair. Oh, no, just well, according to the records, it's fair hair. Fair hair. Yeah. So it's no, blondie brown. No, yeah, brown, yeah, fair, yeah, fair hair with uh, brown eyes. Yeah, that's what they say on the record. Anyway. After the war, were you uh, clean shaven from then on? Oh yes. <laughs> You never bothered to grow a beard again? No. 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 D d was it uh, also a tool to be camouflaged? Was it a pretty good form of camouflage, having a beard? Oh, I don't know. Uh, no, I wouldn't have a clue on that. It would be uh, strange because the Timorese never had beards. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it might have been uh, wise not to have one because the Japanese, if they could see you had a beard on, I reckon they'd take to you. Really? Yeah, they pick, pick you out. They must have, I mean, eventually after you made contact with the mainland, they must have done a drop where they dropped it, razor blades to you guys. Oh, we got a few, yes. Got probably the... after maybe Veal was, uh, got the Catalina back. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. probably insisted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the drops of stuff is. The boots are funny though, they got more size fives than they did size eights. And what size are yours? Mine's a seven. Oh! <laughs> that had to hold us up for a while. Oh, okay. So did you keep the the, uh, the, the, the hardiness of the boots those days? Were they did they have a very much a very long life? Oh, they had a reasonable life, yeah. So did you did it, did the fact that you, um, did you did your feet ever suffer? Oh, my feet suffered a bit. At one stage, there I got a half sole of buffalo hide. Yeah. And uh, you, you didn't walk through the water every now and again. They'd, they'd dry up and. Shrink your feet up, or shrink your boot up, and of course, uh, made your, uh, your feet uncomfortable in the boot. Yeah. Did you ever adapt to any of your clothing for the conditions? No. No, just use what we had. Yeah. Did you ever paint your face dark? No. No, no, never. No. So, um, with your bring gun, uh, you would have been. You would have drawn the most fire. Did you ever have tracer bullets in, in your magazine? No, I, we, we never, to me, we never ever used tracer bullets. Okay. So, do you remember your first, approximately when your first uh, conflict with the Japanese was? It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be long after we had, uh, we, yeah, I got word that uh, Australia had been contacted. Mm -hmm. It's pretty hard to go back in memory and just see it was, and, you know, you've got to recall one would be the first, I suppose, we would get from one side of a big valley and where's the other? On, on a big valley? In the big valley, and uh, it wasn't far across, and yeah. that on one side was on the other. Okay. And uh, we cleaned a few up that time. And uh, you basically had a few short bursts and then just retreated? Yeah. Do you remember uh, uh, what valley that was? No, I haven't got a clue. And there was only just one squad of you? Yeah, yeah. And who, 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 was in that, who was in that section? Uh, Billy, Billy Epps' section. Uh-huh. His sec uh, Billy... Epps. Epps. Billy Epps' section. Yeah. And he was the number two in the in the independent company, wasn't he? No, he is the corporal of the section. Okay. And uh, this is when you're in deep team, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. But he w he was originally uh, one of the. Uh, oh, he's originally uh, one of the second second year. Second second yeah. So um, you uh, do you remember how many box that you killed in that no, attack? Yeah, you, know, you get numbers, but uh, you wouldn't have a clue. You know, we 
I took 30, 40, but, you know, just guesswork. You see some go over, but, you know, whether you've got a casualty or not, we don't, you know. Were you sitting waiting when you saw that, saw those Japanese come up the other side of the valley? Yeah, we, we, we got, got an idea that's coming, and yeah. so we just waited on it. Did the Japanese know where the fire was coming from? Oh, they soon found out. Yeah. yeah. Like, as soon as they found out where you guys were coming from, and that's when you retreated? Yeah, they, they, they started to retaliate, so we got going. I mean, uh, that must have been one heck of a... Um, a feeling, the fact is that you'd fired so many rounds into that group and you just retreated. Your, your heart must have been pacing as you were as you, oh, yes, retreating. Yes, yes, there's a lot of excitement, but I did it, you know, you think, did you, this did is you, what we're here for, this is what we've done. And did you find fitness you didn't know you had when you retreated? <laughs> no, no, I think we were pretty casual about it. You are pretty casual about it? Yeah. I want to run all the way there, as, far, as <laughs> far as I could. <laughs> But uh, did you you had a rallying point, didn't you? Oh yes, we always had a rallying point. Yeah. And uh, so got cut off here. You had somewhere to turn up to. So you always had Plan D's. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so you used to just live out, out of the bush at the time. Did you have any natives attached to your squad? Oh yes, yes. We, we always each, almost every one of us had what we call a little criado. Yeah. And he look after us. And yeah. Do you remember, the, do you remember the, the one that you had? Yeah, I remember Joey. I don't know what, I, I think his trick name was Alamano. But yeah. I called him Joey, and yeah. so he's happy with that. And uh, he looked after you, really? Oh, yes, he does. Couldn't did, do enough for you. Did you have a pony as well? No. So he, basically, he just would, uh, if you asked him to take you somewhere, if you asked him to take you somewhere, he would just do that. He'd do his best, but the main was, you know, a bit of scrounging for food and help carry gear. Did he ever carry a brink gun? No, why would he? No? <laughs> no. No way. He carried ammunition, but he never carried a brink. Okay. You didn't trust him? I don't know whether I trust him. I'd just like to have it with me. Okay. Did you have it? You always had grenades on you, too? Yeah, mostly grenades, although when a brink gun generally had a revolver. In oh. case the Jeff's got him too close, you couldn't use a brink, you'd, you'd use the revolver. A 38 revolver? Yeah, 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 yeah. An officer's revolver? Yeah, Where did you get that from? Oh, no, just the issue. Was this after you maintained contact with yeah, the mainland? Yeah, they got, yeah, yeah. suddenly seen all these revolvers. Yeah. And Tommy gun ammunition and, the, and a Bren gun. Yeah. God. Remember when you first saw your Bren gun? Yes. Where were you? Bob and Arrow? No, I, I don't know the place. I remember sitting down, pulling all the pieces and putting it back together again, though. But it was pretty quick to do. Yeah. Not like the old lures that take you, yeah. you think it's taken a week and where's a friend, you could just, no, no trouble at all. I, I know uh, other special forces around the world, they said the only thing you need to keep clean is your gun. Oh yes. Were you ever drilled in that? Oh, drilled, no, I were drilled, but you, you just did it you know, just as nature because it's one thing you never do, let your weapon go anyway. Were you ever, did you have any strange things like you used to, Put, take apart your, your your brain gun and put it back together blindfolded or anything like that or could you do things like that? No, no, I never never did the brain, but I think I could have done, but I did, I did with the uh, old Lewis gun when I was in camp at uh, Murnamar. Yeah. A frictional shit seizure, right? Did you ever have one of them? No, no. Okay. No. When they uh, seize up and you have to take the whole thing apart no, and put no, it back never, together no, again. No, no. Did your bring gun ever let you down? No, never. Did you misfire, never jammed? No. Did you ever? The only one time I, I always tried to open the ports up, there's, they had a gas recall, and I tried to open up the ports, it wasn't a success, so I went back to the original one. Yeah. The ports you could turn around and get a slower fire or a faster fire. But, uh, yeah. Cool. So um, your first raid was on that valley. Yeah. I was. I, I was told that you may have had uh, three or four raids a week, ambushes a week. No, not with us anyway. Not with you. You guys are probably the quiet. You probably had the least. I yeah. mean, that your particular area. Yes. Down the uh, down the down the down the border side of uh, East yeah. Timor. That was the quietest 
spot, uh, part of the whole operation? It, it could have been because uh, I've got a letter from Paddy Keneally, he reckons we, we's, you know, we was better off than what he was and he's yeah. in a different section. Yeah. So I don't know how he worked that out. But Turton, uh, he was the guy in charge of all your lot, yeah, right? Yeah. He, he seemed to be uh, in action all the time. Oh, he, yeah, yes, yeah, so I certainly think he was active one every week. That's, that's stretching as far as I can say. Did you ever have to make any uh, uh, risky escapes? From um, Were you ever ambushed? No, no, no. Just one, uh, never, uh, never in a Jap ambush. No. You never, in a, you never retreated and discovered that you're retreating towards the Japanese or anything like no, that. No, no. Lucky. No, did we? Well, it's all luck. <laughs> did you ever see any Dutch? Um, apparently, Van. Have you heard of Van Strutten? Yes, I heard about him. We never seen him. Apparently, um, they used to patrol around Atamboa a lot. Yeah. I don't know where they did anything. <laughs> no, no. You never kept in contact with the Dutch at all? No, no. That struck in the block. So, okay, you remember... No, there's, there's only one time I ever stuck a, a Dutch bloke that was also on, on my leg, mm -hmm. and I think it was five balls and he caught on to it. Mm -hmm. Of course, that, that made me dance, but it, it killed the ulcer. Yeah? And I was always thankful for that. Oh, did you ever get uh, sick uh, on Timor? Oh, yes. What did you get sick yeah, from? Uh, well, the worst thing was uh, pleurisy. Okay. Yeah, pleurisy, and I, got, you know, I forget the name of the place, and then yeah, they put me on a stretcher, carried me for a while. And, yeah. But the do doctor don't clean. Yeah. I, I think I was just about right. Uh huh. And all you do is paint the side and back with iodine, <laughs> and uh, I come right. What is pleurisy? Pleurisy. Oh, it's an inflammation under your, back under your shoulder blade. Okay. Well, I think that's what it is, anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, oh, it gives you a temperature, you, you spew up blood, and it's a, it's a pretty severe thing. Yeah. But uh, I recovered from it all. Okay. Um, were you ever issued with a radio? Was that? Was your squad ever issued with a radio? Oh, yes. Yeah, we yeah, but soon later on got a radio, yeah. Okay. And how did you use the radio? Did you always... Did you, uh... Re used to relay information, or...? Uh, was there a mate, uh, was headquarter company, which you only... Yes, they had to keep in contact with headquarter company. Was it difficult keeping in contact with the terrain? Because I know there's a lot of oh, yes, extraordinary yes. mountains. You need to be at the top of a hill to get any yeah. coverage, don't you? Yeah. At one stage there, they used the Addis lamp for communication. Oh, the Addis lamp. Mm. Yeah. A few yeah. signalers amongst you. Yeah. No, <laughs> That's no. a pretty outdated sort of... You yeah, send it by Morse yeah, code. We, yeah, Roti, uh, we, we had the Addis lamp there and it, down into, I think it was that Sabi, you could, they had used that lamp there quite a bit. You never used a reflector? No, I can't remember using a reflector. Okay. Um, now, you said that you once saw Callanan and Spence. Yeah. Now, were they doing a tour of all your yeah, positions? Yeah, tour, tour, tour of the outpost. And what was your first impression when you saw these guys walking around? Oh, well, I knew Major Chisholm, and uh, you, know, yeah. I, you could talk to him and yeah. You know, he'd give us all the news he could. Yeah. And just Colonel Spence, because we, we didn't know him, and uh, mm -hmm. so we never had much to do with him. Okay, let me get this right. You said Chisholm, and there was another guy, the guy who was number two to Veal. That was Chisholm. No, I don't think so. No. Uh, no, 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 it was someone else. Uh, anyway. Uh, we, uh, you, we, did you, when did you hear that Veal and uh, the, other, the other people uh, were evacuated uh, by Catalina? When did you first hear about that? When that would be. Yeah, Major Chisholm must have went at the same time. Yeah. yeah we, we, it, it must have been June, July, I reckon, when they went. It might have been before. Yeah, yeah. It would have been June or July, yeah. Ma oh, sorry, May. May 26. Yeah, yeah. May 26. Um, so, uh, you're all issued with radios. Did you ever start doing coordinated attacks between the platoons? No, not Or you to just my had your own operational areas? No, not to my knowledge. And a Turton? Yeah, done a stick in it. Tell me about this guy, Smash Hobson. Well, Smash was a go. The name implies he, he'd ever go at anything. Yeah. And uh, at one stage here, after I did uh, pleurisy, Got back to the section, he asked me to do a job with him one night and we went out and blew a road into Dilly. Uh huh. We, we had 
plenty of explosion and the Timorese carried it out mm -hmm. and they took off as soon as they dropped it. And yeah. We put a dent under a culvert and blew a hole and then we, we uh, dug a hole at either side of the culvert and loaded that. But while we was doing it we heard noises uh -huh. and uh, so of course naturally we got in, in, out of sight and mm -hmm. then we discovered there was a, a, a baby sheep, kid goat, looking for its mother so that was a relief. What was the story with the, with the kid goat? What, what, the, the, was the kid goat on the bridge or? No, no, it was coming up the road. It was coming up the road? Oh, yeah. oh you thought it was a jet? Yeah, coming up the road from the direction to Dilly. Oh, okay. And we could hear this lady noise, we never stopped to see what, you know, what the noise really was. Yeah. And when, then, when the goat got up to where we were, we knew what it was. Okay. So when did you blow the bridge? Before, uh, because you thought the, the goat was a jet, that's when you blew the bridge? Is, is that how it goes? No, no. We, we, once we decided to go, we went back to, to you know, finish off our hole and load them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, it, took, it took the Japs over six weeks to uh, yeah. repair the When you blew the bridge, there was no Japs around at all? No. You decided to just blow it? You didn't decide to blow it up with Japanese on it? No. No. <laughs> no, no. Okay. How many people were on that mission? Yeah, there's only the two of us. Just you and Smash yeah, Hodgson? Yeah, yes, Smash Hodgson. Where did you receive your training on um, explosives? Well, well Smash had the, uh, he had the training on explosives. And you just decided to go with him? Well, he asked me to go with him. <laughs> and, uh, I often thought about it, it was a silly thing to do because he didn't Why know Why would he have go. chosen you? I don't know. Uh, you haven't got a clue, he just said, you know, do a job with us tonight and that was it. <laughs> well, so it was just almost an honour to be asked to go with him. So wow. You know what he's up to. But he was a real goer. He, uh, he, he wasn't in your section at all, was he? He's in the sapper section. That's a part, part of Dur Dur Turton's platoon. He's in your, uh, yeah. He was in someone else's section. Yeah, yeah. Uh, squad. Yeah. And uh, he, decided, he, he asked you from another squad to go yeah, with him to the bridge. Yeah, another section, yes. Yeah, we, we were together. Yeah, we were section we were together with Turton. Yeah. yeah. So... Uh, Turton was in charge of D platoon. Okay. Um, and Smash Hodgson was um, one of these these, cra these crazy people. Um. <laughs> okay. Now uh, you said something about the mission where did you actually see Hodgson get captured, or or did you just hear about it? The story no, where no, he no, ran. No, up. I was never seeing get cap captured, but I, I, you know, he, when he when he got released and came back into our platoon, mm -hmm. I see him coming in. You saw him wearing a sarong. Yeah, see, him wearing the sarong, and he, I th I'm pretty sure he had a rifle without a bolt in it. Yeah. And uh, the first thing he did was Jack said to Jack Rice, "Get us, get us some shorts." He wanted his shorts. So he looks pretty embarrassed when he arrived back. What, what was his no. general demeanour? Was he just feeling like, <laughs> you oh, know? Yeah, no, no, I don't think he's embarrassed. Uh, you could see he'd been through a pretty, uh, you know, a pretty bad ordeal anyways. Did he look traumatised or upset? Oh, yes, or? yes, yes. Well, he wasn't broken, was he, at all? Oh, no, no, no. How soon after that was he back in action? Oh, I suppose the next ambush he was there. Yeah. So he just got, us, got some pants and he's away again? Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys uh, have a good... Um, did you ever send your, uh, were you on the north coast at any time, west of, you said La Quissa, uh, on your notes there? Yeah. No, Likasar. Likasar, yeah. sorry, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What can you tell me about being up there? Well, I'll tell you that uh, Mark Conn and I were sent to Oak Pit, uh, you know, to have a look at what we could see at Likasar, how many Jap planes are coming in, and sort of, you know, sort of try and count the troops. How many of you go to the trees, wherever they go, mm -hmm. and we were there for a couple of days and that's when we got called back mm -hmm. and the big August push was on and uh, it took us a couple of days to get back to the uh, section. Did you ever, were you ever uh, informing headquarters who would relay on to Darwin, the positions, the enemy positions and so forth? Oh, that had been done through our, like, through our seniors and, uh, and uh, our SIGs. Yeah. 
So we, uh, we get the information, pass it on to our seniors, and that, 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 that relay. relay. Did, you any see, did you ever see any ships go up and down the coast? No. Okay. No, we, we couldn't see the coast from where we were. Okay. What about, um, okay, you, who, who told you about the major push? How did you find out about the major push in August? Well, the Japs. Yeah. Well, they, they say we were and over liquor, sir, and, and yeah. uh, uh, the Timorese come through and told us to get back to our unit. That's how we knew that was on. Mm -hmm. How reliable were these uh, messengers that you, you started? Oh, the Timorese were good. Yeah. We only ever struck one that... Uh, we struck one that he was carrying, definitely carrying messages into the Japs. Yeah. And he was dealt with. How'd you deal with him? Just shot him? Yeah, he's, he's just shot you. Yeah. And was he with you guys for a while? Uh, he, he, he wasn't a creator or anything like that. He just used to come into the camp and sit around. And then we, we found out what he was doing. We got him with some notes. And what, what, camp, what camp was that? What camp did that actually occur? Camp. Oh well, it's, it's probably up near Remelia Range here somewhere. Yeah. Could have been uh, near Litfoho or uh, Roti. Or so way. how did you find out? Did you just uh, did you just find out from someone else that he'd yeah, been dealt the, with? Yeah, the other we could see that his, his, the other team of Rees were sort of isolating him, and, and so we started to ask questions, and that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. So one of your people went out and just shot him. Yeah. Was it a senior officer guy who did it, or no, just private? Yeah. You did. Well, they had the senior officer directions. And yeah. And what was and what was the team Marie's reaction to that happening? It, it, it didn't seem to affect us as far as we were concerned. They're still faithful to us, loyal to us. Were they angry at the sky for? Oh, angry, yes. They, they, they were angry, angry at him. Angry with him, yes. So they didn't have any regrets or anything like no, that, and no, he no. was killed. Jesus. So, did you ever have any other Timorese uh, attack you? No. Oh, it's just, no, we've got to be careful there. Uh, Basil Keith, he is out on patrol and uh, some, uh, some Timorese took to him mm -hmm. and stoned him yeah. and knocked him out pretty bad to the extent that he was evacuated in one of the flying boats. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 I think it was he ended up a, using his revolver on him, didn't he? Is that, the, is that the guy who started using his revolver, firing them away because they took his bring gun or something like that? Or? No, I don't recall. Yeah. Don't, just don't know what happened. I wasn't with, uh, with the battle on the was that, Did that happen on the uh, the August offensive? No, that was later. That was Oh, that was later, okay. Yeah. Um, so you basically just retreated from Lakusa or whatever. Likasa. 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 That's like what I called it anyway. Likasa. Yeah. And uh, you basically just retreated and did you ever set up any ambushes for the for the Japanese who were advancing? No, but I think you Don Turton had some there. Yeah. But uh, we weren't in it. You just, you just wanted to get out of there? We, we wanted to get back to our platoon. And, and where did you meet up with them? Well, that's... Uh... Did you have to climb any mountains? No, oh, with the usual valleys and that. But I can't, I can't recall where we could go back to. Was it Sabi or somewhere left? Oh, Sabi, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just a minute. Have a quick look at this map here. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah, Sabi was where the base was. Bit of a trick from oh, yeah. uh, well, Lucas trick. Yeah, not only we, we couldn't go the usual route, we had to scout round. Did you ever have to climb up a, any steep hills just to avoid the Japanese? Not on that, not on that one, no. Were, were the Japanese pretty much on your tail the whole time? No, no, we never encountered a real lot of Japanese. We, we'd find where they were and we'd scout round them. Did you hear, uh, could you hear during your uh, trip to Sabi, um, firing going on oh, in yes, the distance? Oh yes, we could hear firing, yeah. Did you have a radio with you? No. God. So when you got back to Asabi, what, what had you heard about what was going on elsewhere? Oh, he well, just told us, you know, the, yeah, what had been going on and what had happened. And uh, then, of course, when Smash came in, we found out a lot more. And that, oh, it's when Smash came in wearing his sarong. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're Asabi when you saw... Uh, no, 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 when Smash, I can't think of the name of the place where... Smash coming to us? Yeah. Mapi. 
No, Bob and Arrow. Yeah, okay. Well, I was, headquarter company was at Sami. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, some Hudsons came over uh, at the end of, your, of that offensive and bombed a couple of villages. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, well, I, I think that's the time where, uh, you know, we, we started out in patrol again. Mm -hmm. And uh, the non turtle was on the Japs and we missed them, couldn't find where they were. And, and uh, Billy Epps, Mark Pond and myself went out mm -hmm. to do a recce. Yep. And uh, we was in this the team of Reed's village and they was, you know, everything was okay. And they were singing out, they were singing out, nip and mine, nip and mine. We, we wondered what the hell was going on here. We, we see these Japs. And we took up uh, took up on a, a hill yeah. and got a position there and uh, just see what happened when they went through the Timorese village. If they'd come towards us, we'd go and open up. Yeah. But they never, they just went through the village, yeah. down the other side, started doing PT, yeah. packed up again the way they went. Did you see any green flares in the air? No. So they just packed up and just went back? They didn't burn the village down? No, 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 no. Must be no, we counted them that time, it was still you know, 263 of them. That's a company. Yeah, they had, uh, they had, uh, had ponies and they had dogs. They had the Timorese ponies with them? Yeah, oh, no, they had ponies, I don't say it's Timorese, but they had okay. ponies and, and uh, okay. they had dogs. Did, did the Timorese ever fight the Japanese? Did you ever see the Timorese uh, help? Did they ever help you with the actual physical fighting? No, no not, in, not in my case, no. Okay. You've they seen, you've, us, yeah, you've seen the newsreels where these uh, yeah. where they're throwing spears and burning down huts. Yeah, I never see that. Okay. Did you ever get involved in the local fighting amongst the Timorese themselves no. against the Portuguese? No. Did you ever come across any fighting between them, between the uh, the, the natives and the Portuguese? No. Are you aware of anything like that going on? No, no. Oh, okay. Oh, I see a few of them. You know, they played up and they. Commandante at the, at the, at the his post, he might yeah. give, a, give some of them a few hits with the palmatory. Yeah. Palma, the palmatory just fits over your hand, it's got little holes in it. Yeah. And when they hits, it pulls the skin up. Oh, okay. I was wondering, uh, so the August offence was as bad as it pretty, got, pretty much got on Timor with the fighting. When was the worst fighting on, on Timor? What was your worst incident? Well, you know, we went out, one ambush there. We we set up, we cleaned everything up on that. That was that was that was a good ambush. But I suppose the uh, what month was that? Do you remember? Was it before or after the August offensive? The after the August offensive, yeah. Yeah. And uh, then the, I think it was the night before. We, yeah, I think it was the night before. We due to go down off the beach to get. Uh, to get evacuated, uh, the, some of us we set up a, a roadblock or a listening roadblock, mm -hmm. and, uh, the, and then when we came in, the, the Japs followed us in and opened up on us there. Mm -hmm. that, that was our worst. That, that was the worst they ever got to us, I think. To just you or to the whole? No, it's a, a platoon. Yeah, to your platoon. Mm -hmm. And did you incur any? Did you incur any casualties? And yeah, only the one casualty. Yeah. Do you remember his name? Yeah, Liz Miles. Okay. His memorial's up in the uh, up at the railway station up in Queensland. Up in, up in, uh, where have they got all the uh, all the man ferns and that? Starts with K. I can't think. So of that was the only ever casualty amongst your platoon. Was that guy? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All the time he's there. And you would have. And how, how many Japanese do you reckon you killed? Five <laughs> hundred. Oh no no, I don't think so. We could have done, but you know, this is only some eyes. It's not a bad, it's not a bad uh, kill rate. No no. no, 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 no. I was just thinking you killed over uh, two thousand. Uh, num uh, number two independent company killed, inflicted about two thousand casualties yeah, on yeah, Timor. Yeah. The cost of only like thirty or forty. Pretty effective, pretty effective unit. Oh yes, yes. Um, and in September, uh, along came 
the Voyager with the reinforcements. Yeah, we didn't know a lot about that because to say we're back in the hills and most of them around the uh, coast, they, they knew a bit about it. But uh, you know, this uh, second force independent coming in, coming in to relieve us, this is good, you know, we, we'll be off soon. But the Voyager went aground and that was it. That's about the only time we got down a bit, I think. Yeah. You know, while we were here for another couple of months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But you had these new guys on the island. Yes, yes, we had to look after them. But they didn't take long to fit in. They didn't take long? They all come, came along clean shaven and soon they all got beards? Oh, yes, and then see, we had the Navy personnel there too. Oh, of course, from the place. Yeah, yeah. Did they have to go through any special training? No, no, they got them off as quick as they could, but yeah. I don't know how they got off. Yeah. But the, the funny thing, there's, there's one of those off the Voyager, his brother was with us, mm -hmm. and he caught up with his brother and he, he never, never went back to the ship. Yeah. He never got evacuated, he stayed on with his brother yeah. till we got evacuated. When did you get evacuated? Yeah, it was about, I don't know, 11 or 12 of December, yeah. 40, 41. 42. 42, yeah, you're right, <laughs> yeah, you're there, you So you're on Timor for a year? Yeah, a year and two days, really, something like that. A year and two days. You remember what it was like when you got back to Darwin? Well, uh, when we got back, uh, they it took us down to a, a place, Winelli, yeah. uh, and set it out of food set up for us. And uh, one bloke came round and looked at the back of the, the transport we was in, and he said, Bloody Australians, where did you come from? Yeah. And, you know, you get a mob there, all torn clothes and beards, and yeah. you must have wondered where we did come from. Was it like a, uh, a welcome back sort of party for you guys? Yeah, yes, it was. You know, they really looked after us. and. Uh, yeah. Uh, then they took us down to uh, Larimar, or the, yeah, Larimar, I think it is, they call yeah. it, some call yeah. it another name. Yeah. But they isolated us yeah. for uh, about a month. Yeah. And quite a few of us went in the hospital, just me and that sort of thing. But uh, Swampy Marsh said, Oh, mate, said, you know, you reckon we got too close to the Japs and they didn't, didn't want nothing to do with us. So well, that's right and I don't know. But they, they sort of, you know, isolated us and we weren't allowed to give any information there. So when you left, when you left uh, Timor, uh, you had Spence and Callanan and, and Laidlaw and all those guys came with you. And they left number four and ended up in the company there. Yeah, well, there's a couple of, I think Spence stopped there, I'm not sure. Hmm? I think Spence might have stopped there. One of the senior officers stopped there. What do you mean stopped there? He it's stayed on there with the second, fourth in the vendor company. Okay. So your welcome was kind of keep away from us. You, you've been around. You might have a disease. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it was. <laughs> and not that we might pass, pass on information that uh, we shouldn't. Did they ever have like a a newspaper article saying the heroes from Timor are back or anything like that? No, I didn't like see that? that one. No. There was so you know I got the good cutting somewhere. You know stories that. Yeah, I was getting back. They, I mean, the local people, they must have really gone crazy when they heard about Winnie the War winner, when they, they discovered oh, yes, that there was yes. still contact with them. Did you find out about that from the locals? About they knew about when you made contact with the mainland? Well, there wasn't a lot of information given out. No. And, uh, you know, it was... I think my people might have been noted... They didn't know about Winnie the War winner, but they notified in about yeah. June, July, I think. Yeah. So when, when did the legend of Winnie the War winner really come out? When did the, the achievements of the men of Timor really come out? I think some come out in late December and some in January, I think. Yeah? yeah. You know, I've seen newspaper cuttings, but I'm not too sure about that when it came out. Do you remember your first contact with your family back in that? Did you, did you, oh, did you receive any mail on Timor? Yes, we uh, got some mail after about five months I think it was. Yeah, and, and who did you get your, did you get any? Oh yes I got some, yeah. From who? Uh, my parents. Did you keep it? No, no, I haven't got a bloody clue where that is. No. That must have been relieved to hear oh, that you're yes, still around. Yes, yeah. I must have thought, he's, he's a commando now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I don't know, uh, when we was allowed to write home we got a little piece of paper all bit six inches square and that's yep. really allowed to ride on it. Uh -huh. And I got a bit of strife because I, I a message from mother and father, a message from Bob Hay, a bloke I was great mates with on uh, at Southport, mm -hmm. Mick Balcom, 
because he uh, uh, you know, I'd seen him last, and uh, Ethel Morrisby from uh, Sanford, like great mates, yeah. and uh, I had drawn this one piece of paper, and then I go, something Luke said something about it. He said, you only to write one letter. Oh, okay. So, but I wrote, uh, you know, just four little notes. Yeah. And and someone, I think Mick Balcom's wife still got it. Yeah. yeah. How did that get back? It was on the next boat. Or the next Catalina or all. Catalina, I reckon. How many cat you, was, it, was the Catalina trips regular? I don't know. This, this we missed out a lot there because we don't hear after the uh, mm. the Larrakia come in or the small boats come in. Did Did you ever hope that you got sick so you can go home on a Catalina? No, no. When you got the pleurisy, did you think you're going to go home? No, no. Don't know. All I want to do is get better. What did you think about? Uh, did you ever think, oh, lucky buggers going home on the Catalina? Because apparently one guy, uh, who was it? One guy at the reunion, he was he was he, he was flown back. Oh, the guy on the in the wheelchair. Oh, Bob Hiddle. He yeah. actually was flown back from yeah. Penfui, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He took like two days before the Japanese landing. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's never walked since. No. And yet he's got a family of nine. I went to school with his wife. It's a bit so. of a skill. <laughs> yeah, so he said, you, jo you tease him, you, jo you joke with him about that? Yeah, yeah I give it to him sometimes. Your, 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 your main legs didn't work, but your third mm. one did, so. Yes. Hey, I was wondering, uh, you, you got six kids. <laughs> uh, you weren't married before you left, were you? No, I got married when I came home from New Guinea. How soon after you came back from New Guinea were you married? Were you engaged while you were over in Timor? No, no. So you met your, your wife? I met my wife when I came out of Timor. And we, we kept we, in contact. Where did you meet her? In Darwin or? No, here in Dover. In Dover? Oh, yes. So you came back from Timor, then you had yeah. home leave? Yes. And then you went back for uh, New Guinea? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you met her on the trip back. Was there any news coverage about you and the local paper? The there were some of the others because, it, because I was in Hastings, that's 19 kilometres south of here, so I was at the out of contact. But some yep. of the others, they had quite a big write up in uh, uh, the Mercury and uh, their photos in the Mercury. Yeah. So, it's been pretty interesting times, the, the, the story of you guys escaping. Oh yes, East and uh, then fighting a successful guerrilla campaign. What was the what What was the reasons why you were told you were going to leave Timor? Because it was just a rotation, or yeah. you've done your tour of duty, or? Oh well, we we're just getting down in health. Oh, okay. I think that was the main one of the reasons. Yeah. You're getting really you know down in health, but I, I, I was still going pretty good. I was down in weight, but I still felt pretty fit. So you guys were all on this one probably ward in a hospital for a month. What did you guys do during that month? You must have just had the time of your life. Oh, no, no, we, we was isolated yeah. in a camp for a month. But in a camp? Some of us, I might have been only in the hospital yeah. you know, four or five days to clear up the dysentery and then back to camp. Back to camp. So in camp, you both must have been uh, fantastic, you know, you got oh, a proper yeah. bed. Yeah. Did you, did you, did you, uh, you're a pretty close-knit bunch by then. And, uh, oh, yes, yes. You, you wouldn't have got a closer bunch than us, the chaps that uh, got out, the second 40th blokes that come out of team or and went to the second 12th battalion. Did you get bored during that month? Oh, I don't know, we, you know when, when they're going to send us home, when are they going to send us home? And, you know, where where you go from here? Yeah. Mm, but, uh, yeah, I suppose you did get bored. Um, did the other people in the camp, what did they think of you? Oh, we were. We didn't have much contact with them, so we didn't know what they thought of yeah. us. You suddenly had to shave again, didn't you? Yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> I know, the canteen there, the canteen there, tried to whack it over us two or three times, but uh, it never worked. Say it again, they tried to... You know, you go, someone would go for cigarettes, someone yeah. goes to the back of them, yeah. and they you know, whack the price on it and that sort of thing. And yeah. Or you wanted to get for a chocolate or... They wanted to charge you three times by Yeah, yeah, and we, we, we were up for that. You see, we had to pay for 10 months. Oh, I see, you had a lot of back pay, didn't you? <laughs> yes. God, 10 months back pay, that's quite a lot. Yeah. But not only that, I went up to the barracks for some reason, and uh, this, uh, this lady corporal, uh, she said, see me regular, and she said, oh, you're due for a subsistence pay. I said, what do you mean? Oh, she said, 
you, you was on ration strength, so you, you, you were entitled to three and fourpence a day. So I got ten months at three and fourpence a day, seven days a week. Yeah. Cool. I had a big lot of money to draw. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you were then given leave. Yeah. And you decided to come home, and how long were you home for? About yeah, three weeks. Three weeks? Yeah. Only three weeks after all yeah, that time? Yeah. How did you spend your three weeks? Just oh. relaxing? Yeah, just relaxing. Going around, you know, people and different things. But everyone wanted to see you. Oh, yeah. Did it's anyone notice anything different about you? Oh, no one remarked anyway. Pardon? No one remarked much. No, you didn't? Yeah. But there's one curious thing, they had a, had a, a fair world for some of the chaps just yeah, you know, they just joined up and going to going into the Army Air Force and that up in the Dover Town Hall. Yeah. And I got a, a welcome home while they was getting a farewell. So that's, <laughs> that was something different. Yeah. And you were told to report in three weeks where? Canungra. Canungra in Queensland. In Queensland. And what unit were you then part of? Well we we still we all we always said we were second forty, but we were part of the second system independent company there but then they put it to us you can stop with us yeah uh, you can go to the uh, the provost the military police yeah or you go to the second 12th battalion yeah so uh, all except one we said we go to the second 12th battalion the other bloke went to the provost yeah and then they give us some home leave and then next thing we're back up in uh, where we go to? second 12th battalion was that a commando no no it was just infantry. infantry. Yeah. So you, okay. You started off infantry. You become a commando, and now you're back being regular infantry. Yeah. Was that like a kick in the, kick in the teeth oh, for no, you guys? No worries. Paul Laidlaw, what did he do? Did he stay in the second? Yeah, he second, stopped the second. Second. Yeah. second. So you decided to go in the second twelve. Yeah. Didn't you want to be a commando anymore? No. Why not? I don't know why. Oh well, the commander mainly Western Australians and uh, Victorians. And we as all Tasmanians, and the second twelfth, yeah. uh, were fifty percent Tasmanians. And oh. We knew so many. Okay, you did. Oh, so that's uh, why you joined them. Yeah, yes. Did you also? I mean, you le you left the second second with, uh, you know, with, you still you, you, oh, you got the group there. Oh yes, I and you look like you're a great bunch of mates with all of them. Oh yes, yes. So, uh, any farewells to the second second? No, oh no, that's right. Where, we, where we, were they? Where were they sent? They they stopped at Canungra, and I don't know where they went from there. But we we had a, a sort of a concert down in Southport, Queensland, and they put on a concert. Mm -hmm. And one of our chaps, Babe Teague, uh, they kidnapped him up to sing, and they, the uh, the audience had never heard anything like him. They said, <laughs> "Yeah, oh, he's great." Yeah. yeah. So. You're sent up to New Guinea next. Oh yeah. The second twelve. Do you still keep keep in contact with the second twelve? Yes, it's, it's peculiar that the second fortieth is sort of the main thing, and the second second commandos. But the second twelfth, I spent more time with them than I did with the others. But it, you always go back to the second fortieth, the second second. But the second twelfth, they're good mob. Boy, where they were. Yeah. But most of us uh, that went to the second twelfth, we went into B Company. Yep. Into 11 platoon, we yep. almost made the platoon up of X second 40th. Oh really? Yeah. God, of course there were a lot of uh, yeah return to us. If yeah. you look at the back of the Doom Battalion, it says RTA 42. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, and it was a peculiar thing when I went into second 40th battalion, I went into 11 platoon six section. Yep. When I went to second 12th, I went to 11 platoon. A section leader of six section. Yeah. What rank did you uh, in the war as? Corporal. Corporal, yeah. Corporal. Yeah, yeah. So you're in charge of your own section. Oh yeah. yeah. And most of them were uh, Tasmanians. Tasmanians from the Four second fortieth. Yeah, yeah. Mm. One bloke went to a headquarter company in the second twelve, and he never got on too good. And he came to me, he said, "Can't you get me in your section, boot? I said, "All right, I'll swap you. I'll try." So you come to my section and did you, made up another did one. Did you get any action in, in New Guinea? Oh yes, plenty of action. Was it more organised than the second 40th? Same bunch of time? Uh, yeah, well the second 40th was well organised without the equipment. Mm -hmm. But the second 12th, you know, we, we had the equipment there. Yeah. So what sort of action did you have? Was it conventional engagements? I mean, um, 
What was it like in New Guinea? Where were you based? Uh, we, we, uh, New Guinea, we were first to Port Moresby. Uh -huh. Then we were flown into Dampu in the Ramu Valley. Then we went to Guy's Post. We were there for a while. Mm -hmm. Then we went up in the uh, Shady Ridge area. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we had a fair bit of combat there. It, it was rifle fire and a couple of times hand, uh, hand uh, fighting. Not much, very rare. And uh, we did patrols there. And, uh, and one I remember, I, I, I wrote that up. I, I, it, it took the section out and I was in the lead and I came to this track mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure. So I called Alan Cunningham up at Chapman Line System. I said, What do we do here, Alan? It had an a, a arrow po pointing down this track. Yeah. And he said, I don't know, Bert. He said, we better not go down there. He said, perhaps we go around there a bit further on and come round and see what's happening. And we went round and happened. And when I looked up, here's a bloody big jab rolling a cigarette to have a smoke. Mm -hmm. Here's a machine gun down at his feet, pointed straight up the track. Mm -hmm. So you're lucky to get out of Timor. We're lucky to get out of that one. Did you think that what you learned on Timor prepared you for that oh, situation? Oh, yes, yes. And some of the younger ones, they, they looked to us because of what, where we'd been. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine the second 12 people that have seen 32nd, 40th people over here. Yeah, yeah. They would have just like, good God, they're the men of Timor. Yeah. Was, it like, was it like that? Yeah, and then those the rats of Tobruk. Yeah? In fact, it, it Did you say the rats of Tobruk? Yeah, the second 12. They were the same people? Yeah. Were they the guys brought back from Tobruk? Yeah. And you joined that lot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we often got it there, you know, you were right book in that year. Can you, you imagine, can you imagine what that was like? You had probably the legendary unit that fought in Tobruk yeah. being merged, effectively merged with this, the, the men of Timor. Yeah. And you're fighting in, in, in New Guinea. Yeah. That was like, was there any rivalry at all between no, you guys? No, no, it was just miles where we fitted in. See, they had, they had Dr. Japs back in Milne Bay. And uh, that was in their first trip. I, that was their first trip. The team when, when we, I think we did just the first trip to New Guinea. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, we had no trouble fitting in with them at all. Sometimes he, oh, you, you were rat, and they say rat to Brook, and they say, yeah, you were one of the mice from Team. <laughs> we cop that a bit. But <laughs> yeah, it was all in fun though. Oh yeah. no, the second twelfth, gosh. Now the second twelfth people were brought back. Was it because of curtain? Or yeah, was Curtin, it no, it's hidden for the yeah, I think the second twelve were hidden for Malaya somewhere and Curtin said no, we we would want them home. Okay. Because the North African campaign effectively was over, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And that's why they were, they were coming back anyway. And Curtin said, No, 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 we want them back in Australia. That's right. That was the same reason that my grandfather's unit was sent to Timor. <laughs> yeah, well, at one stage we talk about how they accepted us, uh, Captain Hope. Mm -hmm. uh, H A U G H T. Mm -hmm. He said at one stage, he said, if we were the example of the second 40th, mm -hmm. he'd like to be with us. So that's what he thought of us. Really? Mm. And that was this guy, the, the, the Brook guy? Yep. That's pretty touching. Oh, it was, yeah. So, did you find that you fought differently to the rest of the men in the second 12th? No, because we we, we differ more for all together than what they have to brook. Yeah. So we just fit in together. You know? So it was seamless. Effectively, you got on pretty well from day one. Oh yes, no worries at all. Yeah. So, um, did you have any major engagements against the Japanese in New Guinea? Yes, up around uh, say up around Shaggy Ridge, and your and uh, yeah. Uh, yes, we had plenty of engagements there, guys. But we a lot of a lot of was patrol to locate the Japs and then get the uh, fighters over, get the bombers over. So the ah okay. So oh, when, yeah. when you're talking about patrols, you had radios with you and you used to radio back the positions to the. No, no, we just bring the information back. We never ever took a, a radio out. So you're that. doing a recce. Yeah, recce. Yeah. That sounds that sort of tactic for an infantry battalion. Yeah. That's more commando. <laughs> yeah. You have to admit that, isn't it? Yeah. It sounds. Um, any other battalions there, which are uh, up in New Guinea? 
second tenth and second ninth, which were the eighteenth brigade, we were close to them. Yeah. So were they? Did they have different types of engagements to what the second twelfth did? No, they were much the same. Much the same. Yeah, but they were. So when you used to go out on patrol, it used to be just a, just a section at a time. So sometimes a section, or sometimes build up a little bit. So you used to go deep into enemy territory and, oh, yeah. and look 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 at aerodromes and count the planes and then yeah. note the times that they used to land and refuel. Yeah. Oh, really? In the jungle, we just go out and try and locate the depths where they were, and then we. Was it a very effective campaign that? Oh yeah. The way that you did that particular yeah. tactic. Yeah, that was good. Uh, but then one stage there, we you know we send send back all the Japs in such and such a place, and, and someone would say don't don't tell the bloody artillery, and we say yeah, someone would say why? When they fired uh, up from Dice Post mm -hmm. up over where we were, they mm -hmm. reckon there's clear and our ridge were 11 feet. <laughs> you hear the shells going over, uh, and uh, yeah, so we don't tell them, them folks, they, they happen to drop one short and be gone. Australian artillery? Yeah. Did you ever mix with the Americans at no, that part no, of the world? No, I never see two Yanks there. Did you ever see, did you have any uh, interaction at all with the Yanks at all during the war? Did you uh, only, uh, only when we went to uh, Morito Island, okay. we were on a Jap Liberty ship. Pontus H. Ross from Townsville to uh, Morito Island. Oh. Then on an American APD, uh, a, a personnel destroyer, mm -hmm. and they land us at Malik Papin. Mm -hmm. Island, is that the one just off the coast of New Guinea? No, that's well up, uh, that's north of Guadalcanal or? No, it's, oh, well, it's, Rebel? it's, not that, it's more Borneo mm -hmm. way. Oh, Borneo. Okay, it's one of those islands. Uh, yeah. uh, Celebes. It's, it's, it's north of the Celebes. Celebes. By Celebes or Sulawesi. Or... No, no. It's, well, it could be Celebes. It, it's, yeah, we come from Moratai straight to Balik Papin anyway. It's north of Ambon. Oh, yeah, yes. It's yes, north of Ambon. But east and east. So, what did you do? Um, so, you were for a short time doing all the patrols. You never had any major engagements. You were just doing reckeys. Which was actually quite effective tactic. Oh for yes, war. yes. We, we had a couple of, you know, almost hand to hand clashes with some of the villages. And when you arrive on, when you arrive on New Guinea, were you aware of other tactics they were using? Were they having major in, uh, engagements at all, or was it just all pretty much that type of tactic? Oh, well, mainly uh, when we got up in the finished or finished here ranges and. Uh, uh, Ramu Valley and that. Yeah. There was more patrol and, and, and find. Yeah. And then uh, you get your fighters in, or get your bombers in, get your artillery in. Did you ever get the feeling that maybe the tactics which you used on Timor was being used in New Guinea? Oh, oh yes, yes. You know, there were different things there with the, uh, uh, say, with the Allen gun. When we got one of them, some of them had a, a wooden butt on them. A hole up. Yeah. And uh, we wouldn't use them with that, that butt on because if you, you sneak sneaking through the jungle, you get get that caught in a branch or something, it gives you straight away. Mm. So we, we got the Owen gun with the uh, full butt. Okay. Yeah, we, we still use, you know, because the, the, the second 12 blokes have been, well, they've been in Bill Bay, they knew, knew a fair bit about the jungle, mm. and, uh, and they had. Uh, when they train on Athens and Tablelands, mm -hmm. they got it drilled into them, mm -hmm. you know, jungle tactics. So you then, um, how long were you on New Guinea for? When uh, did you leave New Guinea? We went up on the uh, 1st of January 44 and... Oh, no, when did we come out? Oh, about July or something. July 44? Yeah, I think that was... 43 right. or 44? As you said, you came back yeah, in December. Yeah. Yeah, no, we, yeah, December. Dece you came back in December came, 42. Yeah, yeah I must have, been, must have been up there in 43 and came, that's what we were because we had yeah. a Christmas day in Fort Moresby. Yeah. 43. 43. And um, you then, did you, you did you have leave in Queensland before you went to Murrattai Island? Oh, yes, we had home leave. Home, home yeah, leave again. Home leave, yeah. You're that's when I got married. <laughs> that's, when you, that's when you got married? Yeah, yeah. It would have been, uh, you're only back for three weeks and you met a woman, you then went <laughs> off to a, a, New Guinea yeah. and you come back and you, and you got married. Yeah. That's going to be the, sh 
You must have known. Oh, well, a bit, a bit of leer, and so we, as soon as we got back, we seemed to click, and so that was it. Yeah. It just amazes me to think that you were back here for three weeks, and everyone was wanting to see you, and in that time, you managed to pretty much Pick find out. a bride. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What's your secret? <laughs> uh, I, I was thinking of Neil Dawson then. The poor old Swampy Marsh went, that's right, when we came out of Timor, no, when he came out of New Guinea, that's right, he was all ready to be married. Mm -hmm. He got malaria and was put off. Mm. And then he had to go back to us, to have the table ends up to Moratine and Borneo. He never got married until he came out, back out of Borneo at the end of the war. So he, he just had about 12 months of marriage. Who was that? Oh, a mate, Swampy Marsh. Oh, Swampy Marsh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So you then went to Murata Island. What was, your, what was um, that all about? What, what's the purpose of you going oh, there that, for? That's a sort of a staging where we did extra training. We made, uh, we, we uh, on America's, the American destroyers, their troops destroyed. destroyed. They took, it, took us a different place and we did beach landings mm -hmm. and uh, dropped us in over our head. This is what you'll get when you go ashore, and, and then we made up a big sand plan of uh, belly Papen, mm. and we went through that time and time again. Mm -hmm. And then when we landed belly Papen, we never got our feet wet. They dropped the, the ramp down on the, uh, the infantry landing craft and just walked up the beach. Yeah. yeah. And did you get any opposition when you landed? Yeah, we got a fair. Oh, not to the second day. We never got much of the first day. It's funny, isn't it? The Japanese but let they people land. They had the liberators, big liberators going across, pattern bombing. Uh -huh. They had rocket ships offshore, hammering the same area. Uh -huh. And then three quarters of an hour after we landed, we had the 25 pounders. Effectively, you were part of MacArthur's um, leapfrogging uh, yeah, right, campaign right. along the New Guinea, uh, Muratai, then to Borneo. Yeah. And uh, Borneo was your last job. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, that was the last one. How long were you in Borneo for? We uh, landed on the 1st of July, 1945, and we left on the 11th of November, 1945. Yeah. And uh, that means Murata Island, how long were you there for? You have been there for a while. Yeah, we, I was on there for a few. We did, did a lot of training out of the It was all training, there. wasn't it? Out of the table, we did a lot of training there. We did some at uh, 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 Cairns, Trinity Beach. We did a fair bit there. Yeah. And then, then we were on the British. Okay. Um, so, you, you on Borneo, did you ever liberate any POW camps? No, we, we had uh, POWs come into us. Yeah, and, and, and we. Oh, this is interesting. What was your impression when you first saw the PWs? Oh, it, it, you know, it, it knocked us the leg. There's a chap there, Dicky Ambrose, come in. Mm -hmm. I knew him, but he... Uh, no, that's right. Uh, he knew me, but I, I had a job to recognise him. He said, yeah, that poor and down. What unit was he in? He was second for you. And he was on the Pierobi camp on Borneo, Sarawak. Now, I don't know where he came from, but that's what we struck up with him. Kuching or... Kuching or... Uh, uh, it was Sarawak, I think. The name of the other camp. Yeah. Where they executed a lot of people. Yeah. But, and, you, and you saw him. And what was he wearing? Oh, he, he just had, I suppose, he called rags, that was all. And another two there, another chap, Don Woolley, who I was mm -hmm. with at the Sabah in, uh, in uh, Timor, in mm -hmm. West Timor, mm -hmm. he came there. Mm -hmm. uh, he came into the hospital with a chap named Don from Western Australia. And that, after the chap, after the battalion surrendered, Don did get a boat, mm -hmm. even this chap named Don. Mm -hmm. And they made it, the reckons on the way to Australia, and a chap warship passed it, they said, oh, we're right. And the next day or day after a uh, Jeff submarine came up alongside of them, took them, took them into the prison of war camp in Macassar. So those two guys were on that, they were picked up by that submarine? Yeah. I've got that story in my, oh, we I've got that story in my, in my screenplay. Uh, so that's where they ended up and you saw these guys I after, I went into and seen them. And, and uh, you must have been, felt very lucky that, you know, you didn't find a for a start, 
you weren't captured. Yeah, for sure, yeah. You, you then knew how the POWs were being treated yeah. for the first time, and, and it was these people in your in your unit. Yeah. What was what was your reaction when you saw them? Did you? Oh, gee, was, you know, you, you didn't know what to say or do, you know. Were you in you shock? Yeah, I suppose he called it a shock. You, you, you just didn't know what to do or say. And when I went to see Don and and this uh, chap named Dodd in the, in the hospital, mm -hmm. You know, there's almost complete wrecks, but Don was that serious, he wasn't saying much, but this Dodd, he had a, he'd even had a bit of a grin, and I said, gee, what are you bit about, mate? I said, you can't feel too good. He said, them beers when I get back to West Australia. That's all he was worried about, his beers when he got back to West Australia. Wow. And, and was no, a... I don't think he got, Don, Woolley, I don't think he ever drank a beer in his life. <laughs> Yeah. But he, he'll come, if he ever comes, he come from Glen Huon, but he lives up north now. And if ever he comes down this way, he always comes and sees me. So he's still alive, and he lives up in where? Uh, he lives up around Burnie somewhere now. Alverson. What's his name here? Don? Don Woolley. Don Woolley. Yeah. I'm going to have to go up to Burnie, you realise. Because yeah. Doug Jack lives up there as well. Oh, yeah. And, uh, is it, not Bill, Al Bill Atkinson, um, William... Aitkins, no, someone like that. Someone else loves up there. Yeah. He didn't come to the reunion, unfortunately, did he? Yeah, did did Woolly come to the... Uh... No, he never came to this one. He's turned 90, I think. I've got to go see him. He's on the phone book, isn't he? Oh, yes, he'll be on the phone book. Oh, I've got to see him. Oh, yeah, be worth seeing him. Don Woolly. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give him a ring. Yeah, I do. You ask him how to spell his name. Yeah, I've got it written down. Have you? Yeah, you got it written down. So w I'll, I'll o double O D L E Y. He, he rang up to see he's coming down to see us once, and I said, Billy, oh, Don Woolley's coming to see us. I said, he's about 88. And anyhow, he come along, and got out the car, he's coming down the, the lane, and I said, there's Don now. I said, oh, that can't be him, he's not 88. Look at his hair. And he, he come in, and she's still looking at his hair, but he had a bloody wig on. Oh, okay. You know, he, oh, he's a hell of a good bloke. Yeah. Bit of a character? Yes. Yeah, so that, 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 does he drink beer today? Don't think so. Okay. No, no. But um, now, the war is over yeah. and you were still in the army. Yeah. What was your duties after the war? It finished. What did you? What was your duties now that now the war is over? Can you go straight back home or did you have occupation? What, 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 what we did, we, uh, when the war finished, was, was allocated points. Mm -hmm. for, your, for your service, your service overseas, your marital status, mm -hmm. or something else, and I had top points. So they shoved all of us out with the top points to, uh, down near a beach clandestine, mm -hmm. yeah, near Bellic Pavin, mm -hmm. and there we lay in our tents and did what we wanted to until the ship was there to bring us home. Yeah. And then we came home on the HMS Implacable, yeah. a British aircraft carrier, mm -hmm. and uh, I think there's about a thousand bucks out on it, all set out. Mm -hmm. And the, the first day aboard, uh, I was at the duty section, and I reported to the, the poppy officer, and he said, do you want to do anything? I said, no, I don't. Oh, he said, well, get going then. No worries. So I just went and never heard another thing. And you're back here? Yeah. And who was waiting for you? Oh, my wife was waiting uh, at the station for me. Uh, and. Uh, uh, then we, we had the night, and the next day I came down here by service bus, and they, and, uh, oh, that was parents living day over then, we come down, stopped my parents for a while, and we got a house of our own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And on from there. Ah, oh, dear. Have they done any articles on you in the newspaper? Oh, they virtually did one when the, the, uh, when, when the uprising in Timor there. Yeah? I think, uh, did, were there any people on the 2nd 40th who were then number two independent company and with you on the last day of the war? How many people from those original group were still with you? Uh, Jack Byrne, uh, Jack Byrne, uh, Mark Conroy, Swabby Marsh. Did Max any of did it, there, I think there's seven. Did any of them not have enough points to go home? Oh, not I am, old, no. No. I wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine so. No, no, no. We see, we, we got reinforcements in uh, in, in Bally Pappen. Yeah. I had two young blokes come to my section. Mm -hmm. 
and I looked at them and I thought that you know they should still be at school. What about the Tobruk boys? Did any of them not have enough points? Oh no, that is right. Yeah. They had enough points? Yeah, we had, they had them, yeah. Yeah. God. Also, it, the PWs uh, had enough points to go home too. Oh, well they got them home as soon as they could. There's no point system with them, I don't think. So when you arrived back and you just settled into life, you went straight back to forestry? Yes, back to the gap. Same job? Oh, back, yes. No, no, it's, no it's all right there. I was going to come back. I was a bit unsettled for a long time. Now, my grandfather, mm -hmm. who, who was in the First World War, he got to me, he said, you'll have to settle down soon, Bert. He said, you better settle down and get back to work. Yeah. And I thought, well, him telling me that, I'd better do something. So I went back to work in the forestry. Yeah. How soon, uh, when was your... Uh, when was your first child born? Forty-six. Uh, no, no, I, I missed out there. We, we was pretty quick off the mark. Uh, Gabe was born while I was in uh, Borneo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, she didn't be Oh, so, she born when I was away. Anyway. So your oldest child is say two years, two or three years older than all the rest of them. Yeah, just about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Do you remember, of course, Wally and Dodds, they were the first members of the second 40th that you met? Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, Wally was the second 40th and Dodds was the second independent. Second, second, second. Yeah. Now, they were the ones who deserted, were they? No, no, no. Who were the ones that deserted? Uh, that was supposed to be uh, Daryl Shields. Yes. Uh, Jack Bill. Yeah. But I don't know the others. Mm. But I was talking to, uh, what's his name? Uh, I got into uh, was Scanlon, Denny Scanlon here a while yep. back. I yep. went to a barbecue at the barracks and I asked him straight out what he thought of Jack Bill as a soldier. Yeah. And he said he's a good soldier. I said, yes, but he's put down a deserter. He, he, he wasn't a deserter, but he's in, he was encouraged. He's led into it, deserting. Uh -huh. And uh, I, well, I said, now I tell you, he's one of the best soldiers I've been with. And that's what Scanlon told you? Yeah. No, 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 I, I said to him, okay. yeah. he, he said he has led, or Daryl yeah. Shields led him away. Yeah. Um, now, they deserted before the Japanese landed. I didn't know that. Did they? I don't know. Okay, I'm just I'm trying to figure a timeline, because uh, I know four, pe four groups of people tried to make boats in the north, north coast, and yeah. uh, one group were the deserters. I mean, Clyde always refers to them as being the, the yeah. deserters. Yeah. I've, re I've read that, I, uh, Colonel Leggett's. Yes. Uh, uh, his, his diary. Yeah. Yeah. Leggett kept a pretty detailed diary, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They published it? Don't think so. Why not? Don't know. See, see I, I've been to Canberra several times, and I went down the archives once, and I went through a lot of that stuff. Yeah? Yeah, they were basically good reading. Is it good read? And I'm mainly because in Bally Pappin, my section copped a bit there in the la last, about the last day of the action. Yeah. And. Uh, he, uh, I was sort of a lieutenant to let us down a bit, and I wanted to find out the reason. So I, I go on to you know, different things, reading about this and that, and just, you know, just they go into the archive and just get on to these things. Who else kept a war diary? Do you know any other people in the second 40th or uh, Sparrow Force, and, uh, number two independent company, who kept a war diary? The no, Callanan or Spence? Do they don't know about them, no. Oh, oh, what's the name? Cole Doig, he must have kept something mm. to do what he's done. Uh, but it was Jackie Walton, I think, one of our blokes, he kept a fairly... But Leggett kept a pretty uh, detailed diary right throughout the South Bazaar. Yeah, <laughs> you, watch, you know, what you can read. Yeah. But I think it's Jackie Walton, I think he had a fairly up-to-date, of all, you know, what happened to us all. Yeah, so... When did you first, uh, do you remember the first reunion of uh, the second 40th? The first one I went to yeah. it was up in North Hobart. And we got there and we never even had a Savaloy. Yeah. Most of the blokes got four and they, it was, you know, it wasn't organised at all. Yeah. And uh, North Hobart football ground, half the blokes ended up out laying out in the football ground full of a boot. <laughs> that was the first one was, I went to. Uh, do you remember, uh, was that in the 40s? On the 50s, 60s? Uh, it must have been the 40s. It would have been the 40s. Yeah, it must have been in the 40s, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what was it like, the first reunion that you went to? Uh, 
Well, as I say, they, they, they just, just to get together and that was all. There was no, nothing provided or anything. Did yeah, it ever, you know, does it, was, it always, was it still fresh in everyone's mind exactly? When did you really get to understand things like the Tamahoko Maru and the Burma Railway and all that sort of thing? Oh, that's... It's, it's, uh, when we come out, I, I never delved into many things. Were you curious? Yeah, curious, uh, until, uh, until I retired in 1980. Yeah. And then I started to read this and get things together and uh, think of my own service and mm. so, so six kids, you don't have much time to do anything else, but uh, you know, different reunions. I went to the first POW uh, reunion in Hobart and City Hall and that, that was really well put on. Russell yeah. Pickett, I think he did most of the organising. Yeah. But after I retired, I, you know, I've been to every, tried to get every reunion I can. Mm. So. There were rats and sparrows in the second twelfth. There were rats and T1 mice. You never, called, you never considered yourself being a sparrow, as in sparrow no, force? No, no, no. no. Where, this term sparrow force, what, how did you treat that term? Oh, I don't know. I thought of that. We, I think you know, more mice are team wars and a better name for it. No, the sparrow force. You Why know. mice? Oh, well, they, the, that's in the second tour. It's the second tour for the rats, so where's the mice? So, <laughs> Why, were they, they're the rats at Tobruk, right? Yeah. Were they desert rats? I suppose you would. Be. Were they you ever considered desert rats or just the rats at Tobruk? The rats at Tobruk. Because the Germans said they had them holed up there like rats. And that the rats hit their way out and the team of mice hit their way out too. So. <laughs> But you know the comparison between mice and rats. You know, <laughs> oh, we we're happy. But the mice is kind of like a lesser of being yeah. a rat. <laughs> but do you, you consider your achievements as uh, on team war as significant as what the rats of Tobruk achieved? Oh, I, th I, mean, I think we're on the par. It was two, two different campaigns all together. It's yeah. been funny. Just suddenly you. We've joined up with this lot. Did yeah. you share a lot of stories with them about? Oh yes, yes. We we a chap Freddie Wheeler. He my two my, my two I see my section. Yeah. And oh, uh, he could tell some tales. But uh, I lost him on the last day in action. Yeah. He's a rid he's a rid of the second twelfth battalion. And went went all through until the last day. And he's just away from me. So I've got hit, Bert. And I said, well, look, Fred, roll over to me. I'm in a good holler here. I said, you, you, I reckon you'll be right. And as he rolled over, he copped again. Yeah. That's the last day in action. Last day in action, yeah. and he got killed. Yeah, but he, he tells about his time when he went AWL in Durban. Yeah, on, on the way to the Middle East. Yeah, and uh, this woman, I got it here, the the the, uh, the angel of Durban somewhere. Yeah, and uh, these several of them went AWL and they got chucked into into the uh, military jail, and she went along and she said, "They're my boys. I take them out, look after them to the next ship," and she did. And Freddie Wheeler is one of them. <laughs> God. Now we sit down and tell Tay, you know, Jack about different things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's absolutely fascinating, this, the second, the second 12. And you guys joined up with them. Yeah. I can see another project coming up. But the, <laughs> yes, but the fact that, you know, so, so many of us got together in the 11th platoon. Yeah. Did you, um, I, I, I asked this I asked this question to everyone I've interviewed, and uh, I hope you don't mind me asking it. Um, you look at all the people in your unit, and a lot of people didn't survive, and yet you have, and here you are alive in two thousand and five. Hmm. What do you put it down to between the reasons why you've survived and so many others haven't? Well, it just must be luck, the way of life. Mm -hmm. No, it wouldn't be the way of life. It's, it's just pure luck, I think. Yeah. It's old Swami Master, see, every time I see him, he'd say, gee, Bert, we're lucky to get out of team hall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No matter what, it, 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 go to a wedding or something, trip you be there, or go to a reunion, he always come up, we're lucky to get out of team hall, Bert. Yeah. Did you ever think that you had any survival instinct which helped in your survival and, and not for others? Did you ever see anything in other people that ultimately doomed them? Do you, do you understand what I mean? Did you ever, 
s see yeah. uh, someone and say that person is, isn't yeah. going to survive tomorrow or whatever. No, never ever thought of that. Yeah. But the, I, the, the biggest thing was that uh, you know you, a bloke would come in mm -hmm. and uh, he, he'd be all right until he struck action, mm -hmm. and then he'd just flop. Mm -hmm. And I always felt sorry for them. Yeah. I had one bloke there in the section that. Uh, Big Bellic Pappen, who yeah. was uh, taking a feature, they put down his mu nails on our uh, on our plane, yeah. and he said he's uh, he's only the toughest woman in Fitzroy, and oh dear, and he had scars on him where he'd the bottle, yeah. and we had to go up over a tank trap, mm -hmm. and we got up and got the feature, and uh, and the, the few bullets started whizzing, he just took off. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he went, uh, I think he jumped the tank trap, Mm -hmm. And he ended up in hospital and mm -hmm. went to see him and there's a few shots fired while in it was a seam and he, he, he just went mad. Mm -hmm. You get a bloke like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, I've never see where anyone would be, ever be doomed or anything. Yeah. Did you ever when you first uh, were in Timor and you first heard shots being fired, did you used to jump? Did you ever become immune? To being afraid, sort of, th sort of. Thing. Did you ever? No, did you, Did you reach a point where you kind of knew that you know, there's no point diving or panicking or anything like that? And did you ever become conditioned? For instance, if, if a bullet came near you, your instant reaction would be, "It's over there." Yeah. Where's my rifle? Was there a? Did you ever go through a transition on Team War, where? Maybe you you knew that your greatest mo uh, chance of survival is fighting back. Do you know how some people, when a bullet's fired at them, they run away? Yeah. Others react by firing back. Yeah, no, my reaction is always to you know to get back at them. I've got to get back at them. Yeah. You you had that instinct right from day one. Yeah, yeah. Were you ever afraid on when you're on team war? Did you ever think that you, maybe you weren't going to get away? No, no, the, the four of us, of the th three of us in the finish, we, we always reckon we was going to get out. And I, 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 it's only the one time I, I, I mm. panicked and I was frightened. Yeah. The day, day we, before we come off, it might have been the day, the, the river was up and I got halfway across and got onto a big rock. I can quickly uh, ask you just a few questions about food. When you made your way, mm -hmm. and uh, of course we had no bread, jam, or butter for mm -hmm. that time. <laughs> but uh, the one that kept the one thing that kept us going, uh, you kill a buff, kill a buffer. They they get the uh, the team where they get their innards, they yeah. thread it on a stick. Yeah. And uh, you, you keep that in your haversack, and uh, they dry it dry it on on a roof or something, dry it out in the sun. And they keep it in your have a second when you, you you got you got real hungry you could chew that and they give you a substance to keep you going like a beef jerky sort of thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what about spices didn't you guys have your own little spice collection no no not to, to make sure the food was more edible no no we're the only thing uh, yeah, we wasn't edible rice we went with our salt for about yeah uh, quite a long time yes and when we got the salt and piled it on we it made us all sick. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you guys ever have any special requests for food when it was dropped from Darwin, the eardrops? No, well, uh, I don't have much to do with, at all with that. It was more head, headquarters handle that sort of thing. But uh, I don't think we ever, you know, we asked, we asked to never anything, asked for anything special. We just took what came. Mm. Wow. <laughs> okay, uh, shelter. Did it? Did you ever get the monsoons in Timor? Rain, no, we, we got heavy rain, but we never got the real one soon, I don't think. How did you stay, did you just have, stay in um, native huts? Yeah, we you get in the native, native huts. Did you, ever build a na did you ever build a native hut? No, no, no. No? you just given them, provided it by the natives? Did, what the... did you ever make a shelter, or were you just provided them by the natives? Oh, one time we made a shelter up near Mount Romolo. Uh, some money come over and uh, we had the silver there and we got the Timorese to build us a fair love of a 
uh, hut there, but uh, we, we never stopped there long for some reason. These coins were actually made out of silver, weren't they? Yeah, silver and coins. Especially right. minted for the Timorese people. I didn't realise that. Because most coins were actually just coated yeah. in yeah. silver. But these are actually solid silver okay. coins. So, um, did, what did the natives do with this money? Oh, they you did. gave them Australian money, right? Yeah, they'd barter with it, and uh, there's great gamblers, they gamble. I don't know what, the, what use the money was to them, but really? it, uh, they must have had some value on it. Did you ever have? Did you ever write out IOUs or anything like that? No, I know some did, mm -hmm. but I've seen some, you know, right over here. This, this, uh, perhaps this woman's a hell of a good bloke. Yeah. You know, uh, pay him when you can, you know, get this IO, pay him if you can, or something like that. Yeah. But I, I never ever did one of those. Did you, did you ever meet up with people, uh, Bill Laidlaw often? or No. You pretty much stayed in uh, with Turton and yeah. those guys. Yeah. So, um, it, so, food, medicine. What did you guys have for medicine? We had very little for a start, but mm -hmm. then we got quinate. Mm -hmm. uh, quin yeah, quin Quinine, not quinine, mm -hmm. quinine for, for malaria. Yeah. And that's about all we had. Uh, no, well, we got a few, I suppose, astro or something in a yeah. different time. But uh, anyone died of disease on Timor? They were all evacuated out, weren't they? Yeah, they were sick. Yeah, I can't think of anyone that I've had. Mm. But um, uh, did you ever see any of your? Uh, did you hear about any atrocities committed against the guys that were captured? I mean, just just when you joined the lot, did it, was there any things like Japanese decapitating or anything like that, or did you hear about anything like that? Yeah, we we heard you know tales, but no, nothing definite. Mm. Yeah, some you know dillies, they apparently you know, decapitated, but uh, yeah. it's not not at that stage. You didn't hear a lot about it. Mm -hmm. What about these deportados? You ever heard that term? The Portuguese. The Portuguese yeah. guys. The, these guys who, who linked up with. Laidlaw and you snuck into Dilly to get the uh, the Qantas wireless transmitter. Yeah, yeah. No, never much to do with them. No, the old bloke at Lefoho. Yeah. He, he had a he had a, a he, air raid shelter. He dug in. Yeah. And uh, he is he's, he's a bit tough at times whether he's with us. Yeah. And uh, any some the Hudson came over for some reason they got off target and they bombed Lefoho and all the and he is in his shelter and they almost sealed up. Mm -hmm. And so he reckoned that our information led good to our bombers and that, mm -hmm. he'd better be with us. If, if they that accurate, they, they could drop a bomb on his shelter. So he come back with us and he reckoned we was all right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, uh, well, did you ever have any um, clothing drop, air drop to you? Yes, yeah. What did you get? Just shorts and shirts. Just short shirts, shirts all the same? And socks, yeah. Underpants? Can't That's that. right. You were like, you were commandos. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember that. I suppose we did. Toilet paper? No, we get to use the. Uh, I suppose we did get some, but we uh, we get to use the uh, uh, the maize. What is it? Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the leaves. You used to use leaves. Yeah, leaves, and then the, then the corn cob. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was all right because yeah, it was roughing to get rid of everything. <laughs> okay. Um, hygiene, showers, did you, this, you've seen that usually got a bamboo yeah. where they used to just pour water on you. Yeah, we, we, this, we're pretty, pretty keen on our own hygiene and every time we got a chance we, we'd wash and clean ourselves. And in the river? In a river or sometimes the bamboo poles or, yeah, and uh, no, we, we kept ourselves pretty right as far as the hygiene went. You soap? Do they Not much it? soap. They never eat, they never... Airdrop soap. Yeah, they, uh, they must have done. Or razor blades. They yeah, must have done because otherwise yeah. we wouldn't have kept going. Yeah. Um, uh, let me think. Radios, they were airdrop to you later. Yeah. Uh, pretty much, if you asked for something, would they airdrop it to you? Well, we, we, yeah, we put in a request and they, they all go through headquarters and they, they just do what they could for us. But, I, I can't never personally can't think of anything personally I wanted. Mm. No, everything seemed to come. Yeah, yeah. but the mail must have been the, probably the, the high point of your entire oh, time yeah. there. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah. Communication at home. 
Oh. Yeah, this old bull radar said when we got back, you know, we'd been cut off with everything for five months and we'd been there for 12 months and, you know, it wasn't an easy task at all. Yeah. So you used to keep in contact with Bull Laidlaw right up until... Oh, well, when we, we came back, we was all together and, yeah. and he spoke for us. Do you ever, uh, do you think that the, um... Do you think Australian society appreciates what actually happened on Timor? Do you think that enough? Do you think that people? More, do you think enough people know in Australia? Are they aware of what actually happened no, on Timor? Not, not, not in this generation. I don't think they know about the rats to Brook, though. Yeah, no rats to Brook. Yes, but no, Timor is a yeah, a little lesser. I think a little lesser. But do you think that's the uh, Timor is effectively the closest the Japanese ever got to invading Australia, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, pretty right there. What, 450 miles, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think Dar the people of, uh, of Darwin appreciate what what you guys did on Timor? Oh, well, they must do. I think they should do anyway. Do you think they should? Yeah. Did, did any uh, did any aircraft take off from uh, Delhi Airport and bomb Darwin? Did you ever see the? Uh, did you ever find out whether they did? Oh, or? the Japs. Yeah. Yeah, oh, they must have done. Yeah, they, they'd come from Dillon because they're this little. They're, they're after the air mm. One of the main objects, I think. Mm. Do you think? Um, does that? Uh, yeah. What actually happened on Timor? It's. Uh, I think the people of Australia surely should know about it, shouldn't they? Well, they should know the story, yes. yes. Yeah. Enough books have been written about it. Oh, yes, but... Uh, it, it, Has anything been done on television about it? Movies? You know anything? Only that one, that one newsreel thing. That newsreel, and that's it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Do you think that... Uh, the fact that you guys survived on Timor and you harassed the Japanese in the way you did and actually gave the Allied forces hope? It, it, must, it must have had an effect. Yeah, it must have, it must have helped the Allied cause because if, if they'd got a free run of Timor, it would have been a different thing. Or, you know, did, you get any, did you get any VIP visits when you were back in Darwin from Timor by anyone? Did any, like MacArthur, Blamey, did any of them? Well, they, come, they could have been there, but I'd never seen them. Yeah? No. So you never shook your hands while you were no. in the barracks and all that? Do you, do you think you guys were fully appreciated what you did? Oh, yeah, reading, I, I, you know, uh, the people with knowledge of team, well, yes, they, they appreciate it, but just how many know about it, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Have you been, um, you said that uh, you had your final reunion for the second second uh, in 2003. Yeah. No, that was at 2002. Well, around about 2000 anyway. Oh, no, 2003, that's right. I went to Western Well, you realise the, the, the Australia Interfet had forces in East Timor in 2003. Yeah, yes. Those chaps who are in the front of the photograph, did you meet any people who had actually served in Timor this time round? No, no. Oh, but, but they did a short thing up at the uh, Anglesey Barracks. There's a young bloke came back from East Timor, mm -hmm. and I went up and they interviewed us, and they done a story up there and set up Winnie the War winner, mm -hmm. set up a green gun or something else, and a, a bit of a story there, but it was just a small display. Mm -hmm. And that's the only. Oh, and then I've uh, had a niece in East Timor, mm -hmm. and she came down to see me when she came out, and we had a good talk and story, and uh -huh. and she brought me back uh, a Northern Command badge, and she brought me back uh, the United Nations flag, and she brought me back a Timor East car. And, yeah. And, uh, what was she doing up in East Timor, your niece? Oh, she had administration there, in the army. She was in the army? Yep. She is in the army. Yeah, she's still there. How many of your kids and relatives are in the army? Uh, I think she's the only one at present. Yeah. Did uh, any of your three sons? Yeah, one son went in. What 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 unit was he in? Uh, 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 engineers unit. I can't think of which one it was. Sapper. Uh, yeah, I don't know which one it was. He's up in uh, uh, 
uh, up at uh, Townsville. Okay. Station up there, Lower, Lower Keep. When they left it, barracks. Yeah. Is your family, you know, have you ever have you ever overheard your kids talk about what you did during the Second World War? No, I don't hear much at all. You never heard anything? No. You know? But they, they take interest. Uh, you know, uh, she's claiming a meat ticket. She, she's got them on a key ring, and <laughs> somebody else has got something else. And, and uh, they come down and look for albums or something. There's a photo disappears occasionally. And they, they say they're very proud of you. Oh, yes, yes. See, see on uh, their service there on uh, Sunday morning, mm -hmm. uh, two daughters came, two granddaughters. Yes. And, two, and their husbands. Yeah. And the wife went there, so, you know. Yeah. Were they the ones who put the flowers on the centre? No, no. Yeah. Uh, that was uh, Mrs. Bill. Wonder Bill, her husband was the secretary of the Southern Branch of Second Forty for many yeah. years. He yeah. passed away a couple of years yeah. ago. Did, did you see the refi late? Yes, yes. And yes, you yes. saw the second independent company? No, I never went up there to see the... I had, I had the logo, uh, the uh, badges of oh, all yeah. the units that were in Sparrow Force. Oh, yeah. Never and never had the 79th right. and the coastal oh. second first oh, coastal no. battery, 1880 attack, and to the side there was number two independent company. Uh, no, no, I don't know why I didn't go and have a look. I see the reef though, it's a place that... Yeah. yeah. I, I saw the, you got, so many units made up Sparrow Force. Yeah, yeah. And that's, they have such small units that, the, of course, the majority of the men was second forty. Yeah. You can't, you can't forget all of them, you know. No. They do. I, I, it said, it, it said uh, in fondest memory of all the men who served in Sparrow Force, from your mates in the 79th team or light hand aircraft, battery, oh, or artillery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The last year I put that one up on that just said to the second 40th. I realised so you know, after all these other Oh yes, yes. Yeah, we get about that, Unique bunch of people. You know my granddad went back to um, Scotland wearing his uh, slouch hat. Remember how the, uh, did you know his unit were issued with the Australian oh, Scouts hat? Oh, and, really? and he still has it, it's got the Royal Artillery Cat badge. Oh, it's, the, it's to this day this, the only uh, non-Australian unit to be issued with the uh, Australian Slouch oh, hat. Gosh. So, That's something. And all, all the guys I interviewed over in the UK still had it. Yeah. Well, I picked, one, I picked a new one up at Manila actually. <laughs> <laughs> on the way out. You had quite an effect on my grandfather's uh, on my grandfather's unit. They uh, disbanded this last year because uh, Charles Scott died, the only uh, the lieutenant in charge of sea troop. So, uh, yeah. is, it, is there anything else uh, which I haven't covered which you'd like to, which you'd like no, to cover? Yeah, just brought something. Uh, when I was down Tasman Peninsula, the forest officer, the dermatitis came up pretty bad. Yeah. So I went to this doctor and he, he said to me, uh, and I said, oh, well, veteran affairs, you know, he said, you know, you could got that anywhere. He said, you might have, uh, uh, he said, Where, where'd you go? I said, oh, in the East Indies. Where about in the East Indies? I said, Timor. And then he started off about the British Yak He was there. And I can't think of his name now, the wife I know. And he lived in uh, Tasmania? And he came back here as a doctor. He came back as a doctor? Yeah, came back, came back from England as a doctor in the uh, Tasman Peninsula. And when I said it, I was... Because he was Sergeant Aubrey Jones, and he no, had no, an no. antique shop up in Launceston. No, no, that wasn't Be him. you tell me another guy was yeah, there? Yeah, he's only a short name, and I have to find out what Bert it is. Connell? No, no, it was only about three or four letters. And, and when I told him I was in Timor, he, he, he suddenly realised, oh, I, must, I must have got the tenure there. And Reed? No. Reed? No. Did, did he tell you where he where he was a PW? No, we talked about it. I can't, you know, can't recall where he told me he was. Short name, yeah. uh, Peter. Um, and he and he lived in, in Tasmania. He came came from England as as a doctor doctor down at Cunha in Tasman Peninsula. And when when I mentioned team, I said you get malaria. I said, yes. You get a pension for that? I said, no. He said, you should do. He just turned around. <laughs> when he found out I was in team, well, he, he, I think you'd done anything for me. Is he still alive, you know? Don't know. Don't know where he went. See, he only came out here and he'd done his time down there. And I was just out shortly after the war, sort of thing. Yeah, that'd be in 19... I was down there in 1963, so this would be about 1960 or something like that. <laughs> no, it'd be, no, it'd be, it wouldn't be about 1955, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. 
he's a doctor and doing his overseas training. Oh, no, well, no, he, he, there quite a few English doctors come out, like the, the doctors were scarce, and so they'd come out here for, for two, two years down at, at uh, Coon, and then he could go for another practice. And so Dr. Hunter did the same thing. I think he went to Snug for two years. Okay. I'm going to find out who that is. I've got my laptop there. I'll do some scanning. Yeah. Uh, but uh, thank you very much for two and a half hours. Oh, good, thanks. <laughs> yeah, <I'm getting laughs> thank you very much. You need to go to the toilet. <laughs>